being with these young men. So my two daughters know they have an amazing group of brothers and, and vice versa. So when I'm not with these guys, I'm chasing my two daughters around. And coach, speaking of Ferris, I know De La Salle's head coach, Dan Roan, has a connection with you through Ferris. Yep. Is there an extra chip on your shoulder because of that tonight? Absolutely not. Uh, the, the only chip is that he's playing across from me tonight, you know, and it could be my brother. It could be Tony Anise. You know, Tony Anise, I wanted to fight. I was uh, an assistant coach at Muskegon, and he was my high school coach. And then Tony was coaching at Jenison my first year at Muskegon. When I got off the bus, I flipped my hat around and thought like I was playing. And that's a funny story. Is Tony looked at me and goes, dude, we're not playing. Relax. And you know, I had that, that chip where I wanted to fight him that night. So that's it. You know, great hat, hats off to them for playing this game. Uh, I think it says a lot about us wanting to play the, the top rated number one team in the state. Uh, week two of a season. Um, and uh, they do a heck of a job. And, and hopefully tonight we make each other better. What are you looking out for on De La Salle's end today? Uh, just, you know, uh, uh, physical, physicality and uh, confidence. And uh, they, have, they have a lot of swag over there. And, you know, you, you can't go to forward field three times. We, we were, we've been there quite a few times ourselves. And we just know what comes with that. You know, one, having the bullseye on your chest. Two, uh, just know, walking into a stadium knowing that we should win. So there's two teams here tonight that are walking in just saying, hey, we're going to win this game. And uh, that's what you look for. All right. Well, good luck tonight, Coach. Hey, Appreciate coach, it. Yeah, even though you're wearing the Daily Show colors. It was an accident, I swear. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. They say that this is a game of inches, but I disagree. This is a game of desire and will. Four quarters of epic drama that plays out in real time, right before our very eyes. And every season begins the same way, with a desire to win. Those with the will to put in the effort and time put themselves in the best position to achieve their desire. This is why we go to work early and come home late. Why we go so hard and why we put in all these hours. Because we have a desire to be great and the will to become everything we dreamed of and more. So when the drama's thick and it comes down to just those few precious inches, we have no doubt what the outcome will be. Because we have the will to outwork anyone Get what we desire. It doesn't matter if it's inches or a hundred yards. We want it more and we're going to take it. That's game. Yeah, I think so. It's really one of our true full off seasons with each other since COVID and I took the job three years ago. I think we've had a pretty productive off season. The same as they are every year. We, we want to try to win our league. We want to try to uh, obviously make the playoffs and win a state championship and you know nothing. Our expectations are to win the state championship and play in late in the November and you know we want to do that every year around here. You know, I think the fact that we've got a lot of seniors back, we've got a lot of three-year starters, uh, you know our defensive line has a lot of experience, our skilled guys on our offense. So as our old line continues to grow in our secondary, I think we could hopefully put everything together and be a really good football team. <laughs> uh, this time of year there's not a lot of downtime but you know you, you try to find a routine and a schedule and, a, and, a, and get your kids into a routine and that's the most important thing about where we're at right now. It kind of feels like we're getting settled in a little bit. You know, games are on Fridays instead of Thursdays and we can get our kids into a regular routine, get our workouts in and get ourselves ready to go. You know, I think the commitment from our administration and our community and our alumni, it's, uh, it's very important what we do around here, whether it's ac ac academics, athletics, you know, everything we do, we try to do the best. And then, you know, our parents and our community is committed to what we do, so we want to provide them with the right opportunity. You know, Muskegon's a great football team, great program. Growing up in Muskegon, I've, had, I've been fortunate enough to know the Big Rats for a long time, so I'm looking forward to the opportunity to coach against them. And, you know, I know there'll be a lot of people from Muskegon coming over to the game, so we're excited for this opportunity to play in front of, against one of the best programs in the state of Michigan. Dan Roan, the head coach for the De La Salle Pilots, setting the scene for what is going to be one of the better football games in Michigan all fall until Thanksgiving weekend long. Welcome to Lawrence Tech. Evan Stick, Lexi, glad you're making some time for us on the Friday of Labor Day weekend. The Warren De La Salle Pilots have barely lost in two years. They have won 20 of their last 21 games. They're the reigning D2 state champs. Muskegon has six state titles all time. It's East versus West, and about as good as you're gonna get in high school football in Michigan. Big Cody Cummings gonna kick it deep. The sprinter, the star, Destin Piggy back deep for the Big Reds. And this one's going into the end zone. 
so Piggy will not have a chance to return it. All the fans on the west side of Michigan will understand as this Muskegon Big Reds offense comes on the field. It's a bit of a throwback stick, the way that they operate their offense. You talked about them in the open. Let's talk about them again. Makai Guy, their junior quarterback, number three. What is the key for him running this offense to make sure it succeeds tonight? Well, first, we got to give him all the credit in the world. He's a junior who beat out two seniors to take this starting spot, and it has become his team. He just really has to stay poised, stay confident, and understand he's going up against a tough defense, so do not get rattled early. Wanya Johnson, the back behind him, on first down 10 for the Big Reds. Already changing the play, not liking what the defense is showing him. It's a big front for De La Salle. Miscommunication, first play of the game. Guy has to abort it, and he's blown up. Shooting the gap to make a stop, the outstanding senior DB, Griffin Phillips. My goodness, Griffin Phillips came to play football today. That, if you could put it on film and show people how to form tackle, that's exactly how you do it. We used to call it the old stick, lock, and lift, and that's exactly what he did on that play. Check out this replay. A little bit of a jumbled snap, not really sure about the play, but came in and cleared house. Excellent tackle. Griffin's a first-year starter as a DB. Sure didn't look it on that tackle. Yeah. What was he playing before, the middle linebacker? Committed to go play at St. Thomas in Minnesota next year. Trying the right side this time. Nothing doing again. There's James McDonald. The senior, rocking 44, setting up third and forever for Muskegon. And that's another great play right there. Not only is he maintaining the edge, not letting the running back get outside, he was fending off his blocker and made the tackle all by himself, a one-man show on that play. Stick, what are the keys to victory for these big reds tonight? Well, on uh, the defensive side of the ball, the linebackers have to play big. And then on the offensive side of the ball, we know that this is where the game is won in the trenches in Muskegon. You know, their, their offensive line is a little bit, they got four out of five starters back, so that's the strength. Guy running out of time, a throw tipped and picked. There he is again, Griffin Phillips. What a start on defense for De La Salle. <laughs> Look at him going nuts on the sidelines too. That was the old fashioned Nelly tip drill right there. I thought the throw was a little bit late, kind of a panic throw. He was under pressure. You see him scrambling to his left, under pressure, but off his receiver's hands. That was a catchable ball. But number 11 coming in, already having a game on the first drive. Yeah, they were trying to hit Amarion Glover, and that one was too tall and picked. Here's our first look tonight at one of the better quarterbacks in the Midwest, the future Cincinnati Bearcat Brady Drogosh who has all the talent in the world. Brett Rozier, the back on his left before first down and 10. Brady walks to the line and communicates with a young offensive line. They only return one starter from the team that won the state title last year. Brady keeps with room right side. Brady Drogosh leaning for the pylon. A late flag as he's out of bounds short of the goal line. Let's check those flags. It was a great read right here by Drogosh. And you see everybody flowed with 24 and left the quarterback alone. All he had to do was beat one man on the edge for the potential touchdown. I'm interested to see what that call is. Was it a holding on De La Salle on the outside? Now they're talking about it. They'd still get the first down, but they'd have to back them up 10. Or are they calling a sideline violation because they just moved back all the De La Salle players on the sideline? Yeah, Stick, you nailed it. We got a sideline violation on De La Salle. Saw the animated reaction after Griffin Ooh. Phillips had the interception. Clearly they're fired up, taking on a team from the west side that yep. a lot of people on the east side know about, the Muskegon Big Reds. But that is something you have to fight early in a game. Don't let that emotion get the best of you. Yeah, you can't go past the 25-yard line for everybody that's watching at home and not understanding. You get the 25 to the 25 to keep your team in. And there's usually a get-back coach. Like, that's his job. Get back, get back, get back all game long. They don't have one now. They'll have one next week. Drogosh throwing. Slant is low and incomplete. Eilish tried to pluck it off of that turf. It was too low for the intended target, Tristan Nichols. 
second down coming. And that play was there for him. That slant was open. It was just kind of a low pass. If he gets that up and right into his chest, that's a potential touchdown. Let's take a look at the keys to victory for De La Salle. Offensive line must play like upperclassmen. You discussed a lot of the starters moving out, young guys moving in. And Drogosh, we have already seen him do this, but he needs to control the game. Back in his hands, Brady running right. Muskegon swallows that hole quickly after a good gain on second down to set up third down medium for the Pilots. And that's why that penalty is so huge. You have the, you have the momentum from the interception. You're running it into the end zone. The crowd's going crazy. And the penalty, and now you're looking at third and a little bit short before the goal. Pivotal early play for both sides. I like how both offenses check with their coach. They come to the line of scrimmage, see what the defense is giving them, and look back at the coach for the adjustment. Third down for De La Salle, the line to gain just inside the seven. Brady Jogosh brings down the high snap, throwing a fastball down the middle. It's a touchdown for Sharon Sutton. Rip it and rip it, Brady Drogosh. And the sure hands for Sutton for six. And this play, he had several options. They're running three slants. You see one slant, two slant, three slant, and one guy's going to be open. And with an arm like Drogosh has, you just drill it in there like he probably should have done on the play before, but you go back to the well if you know it's going to work. And how about the guy they attacked on that touchdown? It's Julian Neely, who had two picks last week in the second half for Muskegon. Well, snap put down by the Pilots, and the extra point is right down the pipe. Check it, it was no good. Ryska missing the PAT after the low snap. So, Stick De La Salle's got to settle for the six. Still, though, two and a half minutes into the ball game, these Pilots will surely take the good start. What rhymes with great? Participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the diamond. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. Participate! Yeah. <laughs> Kickoff for De La Salle after the touchdown pass from Drogosh to Sutton. A chance for a return for Piggy for Muskegon. The room on the right side. Destin Piggy crossing the 25 and tackled shy of the 30. Keeping that man contained is going to be an issue. He runs a 4-4 flat 40. Very, very fast. And let's take a look at the impact players for Muskegon right now as they take the field. I love this guy. Look at those pictures, too, man. Those sunglasses. You got to give it to Makai Guy. What a great name. Junior beat out two seniors for the quarterback position. All around good player. And then you switch over to Julian Neely, uh, defensive back. Hero last week. We already mentioned it. Two picks in the second half. And then we look at De La Salle. You have Brady Drogosh, who we just saw have an excellent first drive. And then, of course, the linebacker, James McDonald, who is a linebacker. Eats, sleeps, dreams about being a linebacker. Can hit. He has it all. I've already seen him make one big hit for a tackle for loss so far tonight. Guy is planted. Oh, my goodness. Mason Moragan, hello. You know what that reminded me of? Jadavian Clowney when he played against Michigan. And who, who was it? The Denard Robinson that he lit up in the backfield? But my goodness, couldn't even get the handoff. And he was in there ready for the tackle. Big hit. De La Salle sending some messages early on defense. Mason had an outstanding year last year. Led the team with 12 and a half sacks. That is 6'4", 230 of man coming for your chin. Oof. Muskegon keeps going backwards. They have barely had a positive play so far tonight. Guy, pitch, ball dropped, it's on the turf. De La Salle thinks they've got it. No 
They'll untangle the bodies. And De La Salle. It's pilot football in early De La Salle avalanche. Well, De La Salle is just putting the pressure on the Big Reds constantly. I mean, you're talking not even be able to get a handoff off so far. And when they drop back to pass, you saw he was under pressure, the quarterback for Muskegon. And on this play, he, a little late on the pitch, both, both the pitch receiver and the quarterback were covered on that. Great defense by LaSalle. My goodness, they came to hit today. No wonder they are the number one ranked team in the state. So Brady Drogosh back on the field. Stopping these pilots is tough enough, but when you keep giving them the football in plus territory, this time they're starting to drive inside the red zone. You really got to take a deep breath. Yeah, this is a big early stop for Muskegon because if this starts snowballing, it's going to be a long day here in Southfield. Drogosh fielding the high snap. Zipping it out, back in the hands of Sutton. Leaning for that pylon. He's in again. Two drives, two touchdowns, Sharon Sutton. I'll tell you this, Sutton got the touchdown, but Jack Janicic on the outside, he didn't, what do we call it, a rub? He was running a rub pattern where he just kind of turned around, he was backing up like he was looking for the pass. He just kept backing up into the defenders, pretty much drawing a screen so that play could go through. He will be the unsung hero of this play, but I guarantee when Coach is looking at this in the film room, watch him right there, just kind of backed up into the defender, gave him enough time just to get around the edge. De La Salle trying to make their first extra point of the evening, and this one is indeed right down the pipe. The offensive execution is exquisite so far tonight for the Pilots. Two drives, two touchdown passes, and maybe the top offense in the state of Michigan is rolling. All right, this is Adam, take two. I guess. <laughs> I go like this. <laughs> The best part about playing football in Texas has to be the reaction from the community. I want to encourage others to play volleyball or choir because you get to experience new things and do stuff that you've never done before. My reason why is passion. My reason why is pride. Cody Cummins kicking off again for De La Salle. This one hanging in the air, they'll pop it up. And Muskegon with a chance for a return. That stops short of the 20. Dakarion Taylor on the return, and De La Salle special teams did a great job swarming to the football and negating what could have been a big return. Yeah, now if you're in Muskegon, your first two drives have resulted in minus 15 yards and two turnovers. You saw it last week, Muskegon have what, eight turnovers in the game? They're a young team. You kind of expect that out of them week one. You were hoping they were going to clean it up week two. Let's see if they can move the ball here on their third drive. They've only had one positive play so far tonight. Johnson is the back joining Guy in the gun. Speaking of that youth, Guy is a junior starting quarterback for Muskegon, traditionally a senior-led squad. Give right side, looking for a little room. They will cross the line of scrimmage and gain a couple as Piggy makes the carry for Muskegon. Stick, I'm wondering, after the strong start for De La Salle, what can Muskegon do offensively to try to start moving that football up the field? And you know what, while you were talking and I was watching that first play, that's exactly what I was thinking. Like, all right, so where are you gonna poke and prod on this defense to see if there's any wiggle room? Right now we know Passing the ball's not working. Option plays aren't working. So they tried to stretch it to the edge there, and they did okay. That's the strength of Muskegon. You're seeing on the screen, their offensive line, they returned four of the five starters from last year, but that offensive line right now is having problems with a De La Salle defense that looks like it has 14 guys on the field on every play. Yeah, it definitely does. They just look like they're jumping off the ball a lot quicker as well. And, you know, like you said, the, the, their offensive line should be the strength of their offense, so maybe that's what you keep doing. You keep trying to punch them in the face till you get to a, a point where you can 
score some runs, maybe push the line of scrimmage a little bit. But right now, I'm just as befuddled as their coach is trying to figure out the deal of sale defense. It's a defense that lost six senior starters from a team that won the state title last year and went 13-0. You wouldn't know it by watching them play so far tonight. Well, the good news is those guys got to sit behind them and learn how they became champions. Piggy running right, briefly slowed up, but now he's got daylight. The sprinter for the Big Reds in a foot race. And he wins it. Goodbye, touchdown, Muskegon. And that was probably the biggest and most needed response that this game could have had. A long, quick score where they don't have to sit on the field, try to beat up De La Salle's defense. But what do we say? It worked on the first play, trying to get to the outside. Did his knee go down? That is the question. James McDonald had a clear shot at him, could not bring him to the ground. Looked like his knee may have touched. There is no instant replay in high school football, but what a huge response by the Big Reds right there. That was a much needed score. And maybe they found what works. Yeah. Spread them to the outside, make a couple guys miss. Make, you know, if you can bank on your running back, five misses. The extra point is up and good for Adrian Ramos Velasquez, who also plays on the soccer team. But Stick, that's exactly what you were saying, right? What's the adjustment that Muskegon can make? Well, maybe we try runs to the outside. It works. Granted, you had to get the best tackler on this deal of Sal to miss a tackle, but still, one missed tackle and Piggy with that 4-4 speed can bust it all the way to the house on one play. Yeah, you saw once he got it beyond his defender, nobody was going to come close to catching him. And I love how they forgot to put the fence up behind the field goal, so that uh, behind the extra point. So that ball went way deep into the woods. But here you go, De La Salle's defense. Like, we're fine. We're fine. We just got to make the tackle when we have it. I'm sure that's what the coach is saying. But man, talk about a turnaround in plays. You know, negative 15 yards on their first seven plays. And then, you know, you know quick 80 yards. Not bad. It's called efficiency. <laughs> yes. That works. Law of averages. So a lifeline for Muskegon. And now they can feel like they're settled into this ball game. Yeah, they, they definitely needed that because, I mean, you come out, you turn it over, even a quick three and out. The momentum was just too much to overcome this early in the game. Now we have ourselves a game. That we do. We have 20 points in this game, and we're not even halfway through the first quarter. What would we know about a lot of points on a gridiron game day uh, event on the prep stick? What would we know about that? I don't know. The last game, what were there, seven touchdowns in the first quarter? I think Cast Tech and Southfield A&T just scored another touchdown. Yes. The kick to Red Roser, fielding the ball near his 10 for De La Salle. He's running up the middle and popped. What a stick on special teams. Terrence Davis Jr. lowering the boot. Yeah, and that's what you dream of as a special teams player. You know, there aren't many plays in football where you get a screaming run start and are able to light somebody up. And if you can do it on special teams, it just feels good. All right, so De La Salle, that offense that so many love to talk about, they're two for two so far tonight. Although the change here, Stick, is that their first two drives started inside Muskegon's 30. They will have to pretty much go the length of the field on this drive. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what they do with this offense. You know, we, we haven't really seen them run their full offense because they've been starting at the 20-yard line. Play action for Brady Drogosh. Zipping it far side. It's caught Tristan Nichols. And another first down for De La Salle. And you can tell those two have been working on that in practice. That's a perfect timing curl route. The quarterback hits his back foot, releases the ball, even before the wide receiver's looking, and he makes the turn and is wide open. Tristan, the starting point guard on the Hoops team that won the state title. And he can show out on the football field, too. Drogosh keeps. Runs up the middle. Drags tacklers across the middle for another first down. Last year, Brady Drogosh, known for running more than passing. Ended up running for 25 touchdowns last year as opposed to 15 throwing. And this is what he did so well last year, just dragging guys for extra yardage. And that's what makes him so hard to defend. Watch out for a pass here. Rozier wants to throw. He threw one last year. This one is incomplete. 
It's too far for Yanichak. Muskegon wasn't letting that happen on their watch. I mean, it was it was a nice trick play, but they kind of gave it away. With how deep the running back was running at, at the angle to make sure he was behind the line of scrimmage, you knew he, he wasn't trying to make an aggressive play. So whenever you see that as a defense, it was good discipline by the Reds just being able to sit back and understand what was happening. Only senior starter on that D-line is Nazir Wynn. The star in the defensive backfield, Julian Neely, who had two pivotal second-half interceptions last week. Dorikio Speech, a good-looking sophomore linebacker as well, number 23. Quick drop over the middle. Tipped, incomplete. Aaron White, the intended target. There is the downside stick of having a great arm like Brady Drogosh does. You feel like he can fit anything in there. Yeah, the old Brett Favre gunslinger. Like, yeah, Brett Favre was the man, but he also, his interception record is pretty intense, too. Uh, but, you know, if you got it, make the throw. That was another slant pass like they scored here on their last drive. So they're just going back to the well on what's been working. And if he catches that up the seam, he's going to continue to run for miles. Third down 10 for De La Salle. Drogosh wants to throw, caught, Nichols, first down more. Tristan Nichols tackled inside the 25 with a late flag. Looks like that's going to be a hold down field, so you're still going to get the first down. But that goes back to that timing play that we saw earlier in this drive. Just a nice little curl route, quarterback seven-step drop, hits his back foot, boom, one, two, three, boom. There he is right there. It's tough to defend that play when the timing is that perfect. Looking like the holding is on number 14, I believe. Yeah, that was Aaron White, closest to Nichols. And that's tough for a wide receiver. You know, if I'm a coach, I'm okay with that penalty because I want my wide receivers to be aggressive. If the guy running down the field's making a move and switching directions, sometimes your hands get caught up, and that's kind of what happened on that play. But I would much rather have to tell my player, hey, don't block as aggressive, then please block. Yeah, yeah. Already a couple down. of holding calls on the wide receivers down the field for De La Salle so far tonight. Still, though, they're humming again. Another drive into Muskegon territory. You know, Joyke Bell used to play for the Lions, would always talk um, when he was working with Woodward Sports. He would talk about how his longest runs came when Kelvin was making the plays down the field blocking. Drogosh on the run here, and Muskegon wrangles him down after a game of about three or four. And that was really the first kind of ho-hum play by De La Salle, right? I mean, every play has either been a chunk play or almost a scoring play lately. Two drives and two touchdowns for De La Salle, which averaged 40 points per game last year and scored 45 a game in the run to the state championship. Well on that average right now. They scored 41 in the state title game last year. Drogosh caught Sutton. Rinse repeats. He got away from two tackles, stumbled his way forward, and he's going to be about a yard shy of the first. And it looks like Muskegon is running a zone kind of on defense. If you watch, well, you can't, really can't see on there, but off the screen, all the DBs are facing the quarterback, and they all went with the slant pattern on the outside, leaving the drop off to the running back. Drogosh quick to the line, leaning forward and getting the first down for De La Salle. Running behind an offensive line that only returns one starter from last year, but there are four starters on that line. The only guy who's not a senior starter is the right guard, Ryan Ross. He's a we were talking about Drogosh running the ball. He already has 30 yards on the ground. I mean, he's got a near 100-yard game here. He keeps it again. There's the blocking from the wide receivers down the field with another flag. Brady's down inside the five, but this is coming back. But that, once again, that's what happened. You, you watch the wide receiver, then you watch Drogosh cut in, cut left, cut right. Well, the defense can see the quarterback, so they're adjusting to him. And the wide receiver has his back to it, so you're just trying to block the guy, but you end up reaching right there. See, it's those changes of directions are really tough. So they got Aaron White for a holding earlier on the drive. That one on Tristan Nichols. About the only way this De La Salle offense goes in reverse is by way of that yellow flag. 
other than that, they're full steam ahead. Yeah, they look pretty efficient passing, running. I mean, this offense has it all, and that's why they put up 40-plus a game. They're nearly halfway there in the first quarter tonight. After the holding penalty, it's first down and nine. And now Dan Rohn frustrated about something. He is barking after he called his first timeout. Timeout, Wheeler foul. Yeah, he's talking to the official. <laughs> so we get a break in the action with 2.50 to go in the first quarter. 13 to seven, De La Salle on top of the Muskegon. Red, De La Salle moving on this drive. A chance to keep it rolling for one of the better offenses in the state. In today's ever-changing real estate and mortgage lending world, the importance of a true professional has never been higher. At Success Mortgage Partners, our mission is for every borrower to receive level 10 service, and our goal is to get you the lowest rate possible. We want you to have the experience of a lifetime. Navigating a turbulent market like this needs to be handled by a real professional. So call Todd Barr at 734-674-6154 and put 20 years of local knowledge to use for you and your family. Back to action here at Lawrence Tech as the sun sets on Friday of Labor Day weekend. Did you ask for any better weather than this? This no, is absolutely I, perfect. It's perfect. And I hate to say it, but we really need to soak up these days because we all know what's coming. We don't need to say it out loud. Football? More football? Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's yeah. exactly what's coming. Thank you. That's how I get through winter, because I think about football. And thank you, football. You know football happens in the winter, right? Yes. Yeah, it happens till late February. Yeah. And that's why I love it. plus football. <laughs> Could you imagine how bad winter would be without football? No. Wide open, Rhett Rozier. Down the seam. And he's in for a touchdown. There is a late flag. The only thing that De La Salle can't do right tonight offensively is they keep committing penalties. 35. And that was a very late flag by the official. I'm going to have to watch. It looks like an illegal use of hands, but what a great play. Wide open, easy yeah. drop off. And you see, the, you see the, the guy blocking right on the goal line. I just didn't see exactly what he was doing, but the officials are huddling up right now to discuss it. Waiting on the official call. <laughs> the bro zone over here has already thrown their baby powder in the air. <laughs> That's one thing about the student section from De La Salle. During basketball season, they were incredible. And come football season here at an away game, they're doing a pretty good job. The bro zone is what they're called. But look at them. <laughs> look at the one kid in the middle. Illegal block in the back. Ah, now that's another scenario where your wide receiver's blocking downfield and the defender turns on him. I didn't think that was a legitimate block in the back. That wasn't him coming up and shoving. They were already engaged and he turned around. That's a very, very tough call on De La Salle. Well, in any event, they keep moving the ball forward. Now it's outside of the 10 at the 11, but the touchdown's off the board. De La Salle trying to add to a 13 to 7 lead. Already two touchdown passes for Brady Drogosh tonight. They've both gone to Sharon Sutton. Number two is in the slot, left side of your screen. On the ground, running right back into the end zone. No flags this time. It's a touchdown for De La Salle and Chauncey Shaw. Yeah, it seems not to be a question of if, but when and how for De La Salle that they're going to score when they get the ball. And, you know, I'm looking at the stats right now. They, they've already had about 55 yards and penalties, but still has not stopped them from scoring three consecutive touchdowns on drives. They come at you from all angles. Left, right, center. And now they'll go for two after they missed an extra point earlier in the half. Gosh, with a soft roll. And the lob back to a wide open receiver. Caden Campbell was all alone. I know this is going to stun you. There's another flag. I feel like we're back at the Southfield A&T. So this was after 
So the two point conversion is we good afterwards. Not exactly sure what he called it, just had his hand in the air. I didn't get the signal. But either way, two point conversion good. De La Salle up 21 to 7 over Muskegon. And what a fun little play here. You love this. Get your tight end involved, running across the entire formation. Nice and easy catch. This is going to reveal to you how much college football I watch. That reminds me of a play that Michigan ran in the night game against Notre Dame where they threw it all the way back across the field for a touchdown. It's all working for De La Salle tonight. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the diamond. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. Participate! All right, so after that penalty, after the successful two-point conversion, Cody Cummings punches one on the ground. It skitters through a big red's leg. E6, out of bounds, and Muskegon. This should not be a penalty, because right. it touched a Muskegon player. Right. And I think that's what the other official is coming in to tell this guy. I mean, Dan Roan is pleading to anyone who will listen, that touched him, that touched him. It did touch him. I mean, I thought it was pretty clear that it touched him. But I don't think they're going to confer with the other official. <laughs> and you got to love the intensity out of Dan Roan. You're up 14 points. You pretty much had your way this entire first quarter. But even those little things, hey, that's a big thing. Little things turn into big things. But let's take a look at this replay. You can see it go right off his leg right there. Number eight. Is that number 18? Yeah, that looked like it went through the legs of Michael Piggy. Destin Piggy ran for a touchdown earlier. Illegal procedure against the LaSalle. All right, so they apparently they threw a flag. They threw a legal procedure, and now they said it went out of bounds. Alf touching De Alf Muskegon. So now we're going to move the ball all the way back, and Dan Roan continues to complain who anyone who will listen to him because <laughs> at this point no one's looking at him. Well, what's funny is, I mean, it's not the worst thing for that to be called back either. You know, it just kind of went out of bounds. Like, you could, you could get a better result out of this kickoff. But either way, like I said, Dan's down there fighting for every single inch. I don't know anyone who likes a lot of flags at a football game, but if you do enjoy flags at a football game, congratulations. You've come to the right place. <laughs> Two weeks in a row. Last week we had 46 penalties, I believe, at the end of the game. I lost count at 35. I'll take your word for it. Cummings again kicks the ball, and this one will roll out of bounds. Never touched a Muskegon Big Red, and they finally will get the football. <laughs> now Dan is getting it to his player. Like, come on, what are you doing? But you can see De La Salle's trying to keep it away from the deep kick return. They want to make sure that Muskegon's not able to use their athleticism and break another big play on them. And I think that's got to be the message that you send to your defense, too. You know, thankfully your offense has given them some time to recover. You guys can sit down, come up with a game plan. But it's really just got to be contained and keep these guys in front of you. I promise you Muskegon will get the ball on offense at some point. And the Sal is now kicking from their 15. Check that one off your bingo board. Well, let's see if they go for kind of a little half squib again. Cody Cummins walking away, about to kick the ball. I love this kicker, by the way. Oh. That's what all kickers should look like. Sebastian Janikowski. He was a lefty, though. Now punch it on the ground again. And Muskegon will return it this time. Angled down as he crossed midfield. That was a high tackle. Taylor brought down by the pilots, but really good starting field position for Muskegon. 
who is feeling good offensively, Stick, after the long touchdown on the last drive. Yeah, Muskegon had an 81-yard run by Piggy on the last drive, but the, the ironic part is their total offense for the entire game is only 66 yards because of all the negative plays that they had before that. And then you look on the other side of the ball for De La Salle, 14 plays, 150 yards. The one change defensively for De La Salle that probably makes you look at the screen a little funny, Brady Drogosh does start both ways for the Pilots, starting quarterback and starting defensive back. You're an athlete of that caliber. You use your weapons. You keep them on the field. Gotta worry that it doesn't get hurt, though. Guy slipping away, leaning forward on a play that looked doomed. Ends up being a positive play for the Big Reds. Makai Guy with the carry. Yeah, Makai Guy there. It looked like they had a little screen, bubble screen to the outside. But he decided against it, pulled it down, and was able to pick up a couple yards. But let's see what Muskegon goes back to on this drive. We saw last drive getting to the outside kind of worked for them. Like you said, they had to break down some tackles to get there. But that's where they've had success so far in this game. Everywhere else has been stonewalled. Under two to go in a first quarter that has had a lot of fireworks. Pressure coming from the backside, and it gets home. Down goes Guy Sherman on the sack. Man, put that on tape and send that to a university. The closing speed that he had to track down Guy. I mean, Guy's got a good, what, three, five yard head start, starts running. No, sir, you are not getting away. Number eight, great tackle. So now a spot that a Muskegon offense does not want to be in third and long. Although they did have a third and long in the last drive and ran for an 80-yard touchdown. That is true. Now here I'm thinking maybe a middle screen or something because you know De La Salle is going to be aggressive. Guy with time. Floats it out and another missed tackle. De La Salle has missed two big-time tackles on Piggy. And both times they've resulted in big plays for the Big Reds. My goodness, the balance, the strength, the speed. This guy's got it all. And it was a great play call. You set, you line him up kind of in the fullback position and leak him out. And my goodness, look at He is tough to bring down. That's Peyton Babich missing a tackle in the open field. Yeah, De La Salle's in position. They've just missed a couple tackles that have allowed the Big Reds to have chunk plays. Guy straight run right. Slithering his way across the 20, down to the 18-yard line. About a half a minute to go in the first quarter. It saw De La Salle surge in front, but Muskegon has really acquitted itself well down the stretchers. That's why that huge run was just so important. Not only was it huge in the length, but it was just huge in the scheme of this game because all the momentum was on De La Salle's side before that run. Now you kind of see we're, we're in a match here. Both sides are punching. Muskegon doesn't have to run another play in the quarter if they don't want to. And that's what Shane Fairfield is confirming with the officials. We'll take this thing to the second quarter. De La Salle got off to a 13-0 lead. Brady Drogosh has already thrown for a couple of touchdowns. But Muskegon has responded, and they're on the move again when you come on back.
Welcome back to The Prep. I'm Lexi Ayala here with the assistant of sports and conditioning, Alex Idziak. Alex, I know you came from the professionals. Now you're here at De La Salle. How'd it happen and how's it been working with the high school athletes? Yeah, it's been really amazing. Um, the high school athletes are really impressionable and I really wanted to take the um, ideas of yoga and mentality and mobility at a younger age so that they can take it on to their um, their careers of wherever they may go. And Alex, yoga, I do it a little bit. I need to get some lessons from you, but I know it helped a lot with my mental as well. So tell me about the impact yoga has on mental health. Yeah, so we really focus on kind of letting go of all of their stress, all of the things that they have going on in their lives. And <laughs> I have fans. <laughs> And so that they can focus on their bodies, focus on what they need to accomplish on the field so they can slow everything down and really find that zone when they're playing. Um, in our sessions, we do breath work, we do meditation. So it really gives them the opportunity to take a moment and focus when they're on the field. And Alex, De La Salle's head coach, Dan Rohn, said that they're really trying to amp up the entire athletic program. So what's it been like being able to come in here, work with all of the athletes, and maybe not even just the football players? Yes, so I've been working with the entire athletic department. Um, I work with other teams, um, baseball, swimming, hockey, lacrosse. So they really have all um, gotten on board with bringing yoga into their sport and into their teams. Um, I think they see the benefit of it, not only with injury prevention, but that these kids really just, they focus more, they know what, the t what to do. They're able to really um, get more body awareness and it, it helps them not only like on the field or whatever they do um, in their sport, but in school as well. Awesome, well everybody do your yoga. From the yogi master herself, Alex Itziak. Thanks guys, back to you Evan. Lexi, thank you very much. All that yoga training and deep breathing for De La Salle. It's going to have to come in handy here, Stick. Muskegon on the move again. Now they are backed up here at second and goal from outside the 10. But after a slow start, these big reds have found something offensively on the ground. Yeah, we talked about how that last big play for them on their last drive really brought them into the game. You know, it's one of those things where you're waiting to get involved, waiting to get involved, and here you are. High snap to Makai Guy, brought it down and found his way inside the 10, My down here at the 5. So more right manageable down, down four, third James down McDonald's. and goal to go for Muskegon. Their one touchdown came on an 80-yard touchdown run for Destin Piggy. And outside of that play, they, they've been pretty much shut down, but on this drive, like you said, they've been able to move the ball, matriculate it down the field. Do you just reference Hank Stram from the Kansas City Chiefs? <laughs> you do know the age group that watches this game. They have no earthly idea who that is. Yeah, well, a lot of people are taking the SATs too, and you got to learn what matriculate means. Well, yeah. I thought you were going to say Hank Stram's on the SAT. I wish he was. <laughs> Julian Neely in at quarterback on third down and goal. False start. And that's going to make it a Which longer third. Yeah. False start. Yeah, I thought they could have had a false start on their previous play as well, but, uh, you know, pretty close, pretty close this time. Pretty egregious. So now, instead of third down and goal from the six, you got third and goal from the 11. They are keeping Neely in the game. Well, this is the thing with Muskegon. We were talking about to their broadcast crew uh, that does the radio for them, and they're a young team, and these young teams have lots of penalties like we're seeing. Neely looking left, floating it, corner and completes. Fourth down on airtight coverage from Isaiah Jones. Yeah, Piggy just could not track that ball. It got up in the air and watch on this replay, you're gonna see him look up, he's looking right, over his other shoulder, kind of back left, just couldn't locate it in time. So make it fourth down and goal. Muskegon will try the field goal here. It's Adrian Ramos Velasquez, who's Adrian a returning Ramos kicker Velasquez from last year's team. And he's goal. one for one on PATs tonight. Looking at a 27 yarder from the right hash. Those hash angles are tough sometimes. Snap put down, Velasquez's kick on the way. And that one was perfect. Near hash or not, that thing was a thing of beauty. 
Ten and Muskegon adds three. The first half. Down 21 to 10. And that's it for Muskegon. I mean, that's the game plan. Just keep putting points on the board. You know, you gave up a lot of points early. Now it's just clawing your way back into it, hoping your defense can hold, or hoping you can get one of those big turnovers like you had last week. Last week, Muskegon trailed East Kenwood at halftime. Rally back to win the game 20 to 14. Julian Neely had two second half interceptions. But Kai Guy had a 20 yard touchdown in the first couple of minutes of the fourth quarter and it ended up holding up for Muskegon. Their head coach Shane Fairfield said after the game, look, tonight I learned that our guys can take a punch, pounce back. Well, guess what? He's about to learn if they can do it again this week because De La Salle, that offense has been going up and down the field ever since they first touched the football. Yeah, this is a much bigger punch from a much bigger opponent, but that takes nothing away from who they played last week, who their program in Kentwood has just been getting better and better and better. And, you know, to, to Muskegon's credit as well, they're playing through some injuries. They're next man upping it right now, and they're getting it done. Velasquez just kicked the field goal. Now he pops up the kick, fielded by the up man, and he is promptly tackled in the open field. It's Olajuwon Paris making the tackle. All right, so still 10 minutes to go in a first half that has seen De La Salle lead since the beginning. It was 13-0, then it was 13-7, then it was 21-7, and now after the field goal, Muskegon has crept a little bit closer. De La Salle last year maybe was the best team regardless of division in the state of Michigan. Not only did they go undefeated while winning the state championship, they beat Traverse City Central in the state championship game, 41 to 14. It was a big game too. Traverse City Central, I have some friends that have kids on that team and they, they, they were feeling themselves last year. Tristan Nichols makes the catch, wades through the traffic and gains a few on first down for De La Salle. Oh, and he just took a late push. Slides on the field. Can't do that. Adrian Rankin Jr. Adrian Rankin Jr. <laughs> and you know, that was kind of a little bit of shoving contest and the guy who won the shoving contest lost the penalty battle because my goodness, he said that De La Salle kid flying. But you can't do that. The officials are right there. They're gonna see it every time. And it's never the guy who initiated. It's always the guy who responds. I learned that very early in life. Life lessons on a Friday night with Sam. Yes. Sit down, kids. Let me tell you a story. <laughs> Let me tell you about when I was in grade the ball school. To the 45 yard line. There it is at the end of the play. Nice play. You know, these teams are starting to get physical with each other. See, they're just pushing each other, and then one guy pushed harder than the other guy. <laughs> That's just what happened there. They never get the first guy. They never. always get the second guy. Right back to Nichols, making a catch, and he is... Spun down, cross of the 50 with a little emotion after the play. Tackle made by Piggy. And they're three for three on that play. They've run that play three times, and every time it works for them. So you could tell the quarterback and number 25 work on that extensively in practice. Drogosh and Nichols in sync. Brady running right. Lowering his backside across the 45, and it's a first down for De La Salle. They're just going to rip it off Chuck Gaines as soon as they first got the football tonight. Yeah, if you're Muskegon, you know, we were discussing trying to figure out De La Salle on the defensive side of the ball. Now you're trying to figure out as Muskegon on the defensive side of the ball what to do. How do you handle these guys? Who do you take away? Well, that's the thing. The offensive line is inexperienced in terms of returning starters from last year for De La Salle, but they have every single skill player back. Drogosh, down the middle, Nichols. Tristan Nichols, you can say goodbye. Touchdown De La Salle again. Pardon the pun. These pilots are a jet-powered rocket ship. Well, you're seeing it here again. This is similar to the, what they scored their touchdown on the in the first quarter on. Just a little slant pattern across the middle. I don't know if that was busted coverage or not, but it's not designed on defense to leave a guy like that wide open and not even touched going into the end zone. 
but add some more stats to Dragic's gaudy stats so far already in this game. I mean, he's got 71 yards on the ground. I mean, for a guy last year who ran for nearly double the touchdowns that he threw for, all the talk about Brady Drogosh stick in the offseason was, okay, he signed with Cincinnati, committed to go play for the Bearcats, and he's working on his throwing. Well, if you want examples of the hard work, I present to you this first half. We're not even halfway through the second quarter. He's working on a masterpiece. Three touchdowns already. Yeah, look at the stat line. Eight of 10 and 110 yards. My goodness. 80% completion, that's good? That's not bad. What's high score mean? High score good? Not bad. I think you can work with that, you know? There's always room for improvement. There you is. Can work with there is, and that's what you want. You didn't want him to be 10 for 10. Because then, then you can't work on it. That's true. That's true. But, but yeah, De La Salle looks like a well-oiled machine here in this game. There's my favorite kicker. Cody Cummings, who moonlights on the defensive line. <laughs> what an odd combination, man. His dad's a of lineman and kicker. They don't grow those on trees. No. Unique skill set. Cody's second generation. His dad went to De La Salle, too. He boots it out of the end zone. I don't care how big you are. You got a right leg like that, and keep putting him on the field. I love it. I absolutely love it. All right, Stick. So, obviously, we've been talking a lot tonight, and with good reason, about De La Salle. Their offense is pretty much putting in a virtuoso performance right now. But how about Muskegon? There's still so much time to go in this football game. They have had a couple of good drives here in the second half. What do they draw up here? I mean, Piggy's been the guy, right? So you just got to keep getting the ball in his hands, whether it's on bubble screens, whether it's on slants, whether it's getting him the ball on the outside on a sweep, you know, maybe a reverse. Just he's your weapon. Use it. Muskegon, a program that's won six state championships. But right now, their most notable thing is their alum, Khalil Pimpleton, is a hard knock superstar. Johnson on the carry for the Big Reds. Gain a seven on first down. There's no spoilers. I haven't watched the most recent episode yet. Oh, man, you got to watch it. You got to watch it. I can't believe next week's the last episode. But yeah, going back to the Big Reds, you're looking at them. You know, their 2021 record, 9-2, and two, state champs in 2017. And like you said, Khalil Pimpleton, not only can he juggle, folks, but he's also trying to make the Lions practice squad. All I know is after Hard Knocks, I'm buying a Rodrigo jersey. <laughs> that man is electric. And yeah, my boy Spence already has one. Makai Guy with an electric run. Spinning his way to the 45-yard line. Muskegon told us leading up to this game, the strength are all line. Four of the starters come back, and they're starting to get a push-up. Yeah, those big fellas are making some moves. And you know what, I like this because you're giving yourself an extra blocker by letting your quarterback run the ball, and that's kind of what you need right now, maybe just some advantage. And when you can get that extra blocker in there and seal it and run it right up the middle, that should open up some other things, maybe the outside. Still so much time to go in this first half. Guy keeps up the middle again. First down again. He absorbs a big blow from Babich. But Makai Guy, who's listed at 5'9", 155, that actually works in his benefit stick. He can hide behind the big old line. Yeah, not only that, he can squeeze through tiny holes. That was not a tiny hole. He was able to blow through that one. But yeah, he's been using his speed, using his athleticism, and Muskegon's found a little something here. Starting to rip off big gain after big gain. 26 yards in the game for Guy rushing now. the middle and he was met by a waiting McDonald who swallowed him after a gain of two. But it's positive yardage, right? That's something they were sorely going after in the first quarter and now it, it, it's second and eight, not second and 15, right? So you're slowly getting there, you're slowly staying on schedule. 124 yards rushing on 17 carries for Muskegon. They only tried to throw it three times and they've completed one pass. Yeah, every time they drop back to pass, there's just so much pressure, not able to get it off. 
Johnson the back to Guy's left. In Piggy's hands, left side. Made the first guy miss. And then the Calvary came to get him. Still, though, again, Stick, Muskegon is moving the ball forward and staying ahead of the chains. You'd much rather have third down medium instead of third down long. And that's exactly what I was talking about. Maybe you try a reverse with them. So what do they do? They want to run a little end around reverse for them, get them in space. And he's able to pick up yards. If he's one-on-one, -on -one, I'm going to take that matchup. We've seen it win pretty much every time so far this game. Remember, on that 80-yard touchdown run that Piggy had in the first quarter, he broke the tackle of McDonald in the backfield and then outran everybody. Julian Neely, your quarterback now for Muskegon. He gives to Johnson, who only needed a couple and gained a little more than that. Move the sticks for Muskegon. And that's why, like that two yard run on first down, yeah, not earth shattering, right? But look at you were able to convert a third down just by continuing to run the ball three times in a row. Not taking that negative play was huge on first down. Let's see if they can do it again. And frankly, with the way that De La Salle has moved the ball up and down the field tonight, I'm not surprised that Muskegon is content to get a little time on this drive. It's smart, it's good coaching. Neely, avoiding pressure, running right, hit as he threw, it's incomplete. Through the outstretched arms of Paris. Yeah, not exactly what you're looking for, but I do like how Neely kept his eyes down the field that entire time. Even though he was under pressure, you could see he was still tracking his wide receivers. He was still looking to make a play. Look at this. Most quarterbacks would just tuck it and run, try to get rid of it, but he's keeping his eye down the field, takes the hit, almost got a completion. Second down and 10 for the Big Reds. Julian Neely lost out on the starting quarterback job to Makai Guy in preseason. It was a three-way deal. Blackman, Neely, and Guy were all competing for the job. Johnson Ooh. was submarine down from behind. Lucky he didn't lose the football. Going to be third down for well, Muskegon. Johnson, According to Shane Fairfield, the reason that well, Makai Guy, number three, Rogers. won the job is he was our Mr. Utility. He could do a little bit of everything. But it is noticeable here, Stick, in passing scenarios in the second quarter, the guy who's coming in is number two, Julian Neely. And I think that was an example of why on that play previous to this one. He keeps his eye down the field. He has a nice arm. And being a senior, you probably have a good feel of the offense, too. He'll run left. Lowering the right shoulder. He has stopped shy of the first down. Maybe one of those plays stick that you call when you have four down territory in the back of your mind. Yeah, for sure. And you know, just a, the coaching thing, if I'm talking to him, hey, oh, leave with your left please, shoulder, please, buddy. Yeah, we need that right shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> That thing is precious cargo, okay? Yep, we need that arm later in the game, so deliver that with the left shoulder, please. So what do you call here if you're Muskegon? I mean, they've had some success going to the outside. They've had some success on the quarterback option. And going right at De La Salle has been their best bet so far this game. Shane Fairfield is standing right next to the official. Bleeding as much clock as he can before he calls this timeout. There it is. First time out of the half for Muskegon. And even four minutes to go in the first half. Another good drive for the Big Reds. Trying to crawl closer in this ball game. Hi folks, Dr. Joe here again with Michigan Orthopedic Surgeons. Everywhere you look this time of year, people are running. And that's a great thing because running is an excellent exercise, especially for your cardiovascular and musculoskeletal systems. But the question is, are you running a safe running program? All too often, people are hobbled by things like shin splints and patellar tendonitis. But luckily, simple things like stretching and warm up, the right running shoes, and realistic weekly mileages can keep you in your running game. For more information, go to miorthosurgeons.com. Big play coming here from Muskegon. Fourth down, approaching the red zone for De La Salle. 
Snap to Julian Neely. Running left, backpedaling ahead. A good game for Muskegon. Drive continues into the red zone, first down. I think Muskegon is finding out that they can play physically with De La Salle. They're learning that, hey, these boys are strong, but we're just as strong. Because look at this. This is just man football right there. We need two yards. We're going straight at you. Stop us. Strength of their team, according to what they told us, entering this ball game was the offensive line. Four of the five starters are returners for the Big Reds. Nike win the right tackle, number 75. He is the only new starter. And what a great name he has as well. Nike win. Love that. Neely facing pressure. He's brought down to the backfield for a monster loss. Another game-wrecking play for Mason Moragan. Mason has had a great game so far, making huge plays. But also, this was brought off the De La Salle blitz. If you watch, the cornerback is coming off the blitz at the top of your screen. And you see Neely see it out of the corner of his eye, try to roll right, and that led him right into big number 88, who comes up with the sack. But that's a team sack right there. That's Jamari Allen, the senior, on that stunt that led the quarterback Neely right into the arms of Moragan, who had 12 and a half sacks last year. And he's starting to creep toward it again this year with a sack tonight. But I like that by the De La Salle coach calling that. You know what, we're getting kind of beat up right now. Let's be the aggressor. Makai Guy back in the game. Down he goes again. Mason Moragan. My goodness, what a monster. Back to back sacks for him, and especially after that first drive when he had an absolute hit stick, truck stick play. My goodness, this is a game film game for him. Beautiful. All right, watch it here. Is that a Tyron loose step over? The flag wasn't thrown, so we're close enough. Clip that up and send it to Allen Iverson. I'm sure someone <laughs> on our staff has him on speed dial. He did play for the Pistons once upon a time. Yeah. Someone's got to have the guy's number. Yeah, if you were in the casinos, you probably met Allen Iverson. I'm just going to leave that one there. <laughs> Third and forever. I got stories. There you do. Guy hit as he threw it. It's incomplete. Again, that pressure for De La Salle is like a tsunami around the Big Reds' backfield right now. But it's almost like they flipped a switch, right? <laughs> you were watching this drive, and it was going on. They kept taking a punch to the face, drive up the middle, run up the middle, run up the middle, and they were like, all right, you know what, guys? Let's start blitzing. Let's start getting aggressive. And then they immediately shut down the Big Reds' offense. I, I guarantee coming out in the second half, you're going to see a lot more aggressive De La Salle on defense. Yeah. Skegan will punt for the first time tonight. It's Velasquez, who also is the kicker. Still early in the year. We're still figuring out who's on special teams. And they had a first down at the 18, and they're now punting from midfield. Low snap to Velasquez, who gets it off. Spirals a kick that's fair caught by Griffin Phillips near the 10. So now stick on curious. 90 seconds to go in the first half. De La Salle's got two timeouts. Already, Brady Drogosh has put on a passing clinic. Eight for 10, three touchdowns. How do you attack this drive? That's an interesting question, and I think we're going to find out a lot about De La Salle and their mentality this year on what they're going to do on this drive. Are they going to go for the kill shot right now, or are they happy and content going into halftime up 18 points, which there's no shame in that. Either way, but it, it's going to be interesting to see back if they if they drop back and throw a couple bombs here. Keep in mind as well that De La Salle gets the ball to start the second half. That's fair. On the ground, Rozier. And Muskegon spins it down. And that's one of those tested plays, right? Brought down by number 25. If I hand that off and we bust a 15-yard run, all right, now we're serious on this drive. Since it's only a two-yard gain, we'll probably turn around, hand it off again. Second down and eight. Skegan does have a couple of timeouts left, just in case they want to make De La Salle punt it at some point. Skegan should be trying to squeeze every possession they can. Drogosh run right. Yeah, that was going nowhere. Third down, De La Salle. And that was a called run, obviously. That wasn't the quarterback trying to scramble. So it looks like they're content taking this into halftime. You surprised by this decision? Not really. I mean, you've had your way in the first half. 
only bad things can happen if you're going to go that route, right? You throw an interception, penalty, whatever. You know, being up 25 and being up 18 aren't that big of a difference when your offense is doing what they're doing. Drogosh has thrown for three touchdowns. Chauncey Shaw has run for a touchdown. Brady Drogosh, just a second ago, had the look of a child disappointed he didn't get the right Christmas gift. I think he wanted to sling it on this drive. <laughs> That's what all competitors want to do. Brady will run right with a flag. Looks like an illegal formation. Really the only thing that's going wrong for Jim Sal in this first half stick. They have had at least eight the field. Now if Muskegon declines this, we're going on into halftime. It is declined. Shane Fairfield in the middle of his 13th year, trying to win game 132 in his career at Muskegon. He's made the state finals seven times. Penalty the false start against the penalty he with believes the in his program. He believes in what he tells his young four. men every single day on that practice field eight. and every single Friday and Saturday better. night. No That's doubt about it, Muskegon, Deal one Deal of the better Deal football Deal programs Deal in the Deal state of Michigan. Deal but right now, De La Salle, that offense is a Rubik's Cube that I don't know if anyone can solve. Brady Drogosh has thrown for three touchdowns already. De La Salle with a 28-10 lead stick after the first two quarters of football. Yeah, you know what? It's turned into a much better game than we thought it was going to be after those first couple of drives in the first quarter, right? Muskegon was back on their heels. They came back with an 80-yard run punch back, and they've stayed in this game. They're down 18 right now, but I think they're feeling a lot better about themselves going into halftime than they did going into the second quarter. Looks like Lexi's down there trying to track down Coach Dan from De La Salle. Lexi, uh, believe it or not, wore purple and gold today and had no idea that that was De La Salle colors. I'm sure Dan Rohn's <laughs> happy with the outfit choice. Lexi standing by with Dan Rohn, the head coach for the De La Salle Pilots. With the south end zone. Tonight, De La Salle is honored to welcome back several members. Welcome back to the prep. I'm Lexi Ayala here with De La Salle's head coach, Dan Rohn. Coach. It, it, the scoreboard looks like it's a little too easy out there, but are there any adjustments that you still want to fix up going into the second? Yeah, I think we came out a little too amped up and had some stupid penalties early. And so we got to settle in a little bit, quit making some mistakes. You know, defensively, we're letting them split us a little bit inside, but they're packing it in. So we got some things to talk about, things to work on, and hopefully clean it up in the third quarter. QB Brady Drogosh, he's reading the coverage, hitting the seams. What do you want to see out of him continue from the second? You know, I just want to continue to see him control the game. He's put us in a couple good checks. They're playing, they're blitzing us a ton. So when they're blitz, he's making some good checks to, to automatic plays for us. So as long as he continues to lead this team, I think we'll be all right. Last one, Coach. What's the message to your team at the half? You know, it's four quarters football. We didn't play really good first quarter. We scored some points, but we made a lot of mistakes. So I want us to come out, clean it up, play a lot better in the third and fourth quarter. All right. Good luck rest of the game, Coach. Thank you. Hello Future Pilots, I want to personally invite you to attend our Future Pilot Appreciation Night taking place on Friday, September 9th from 6 to 9 p.m. We want to invite all students in all grades from any school to come experience the Brotherhood of De La Salle Collegiate. During the evening you'll receive free admission to the event, a ticket for some free pizza, and some De La Salle swag bags. We look forward to seeing you on Friday, September 9th from 6 to 9 p.m. And until then, God bless and go Pilots. Hi folks, Dr. Joe here again with Michigan Orthopedic Surgeons. Did you know that kids are not little adults when it comes to sports injuries? That's because of something called the growth plate. Growth plates exist all over the human body in our growing athletes. They're actually little cartilage discs that exist at the end of all the long bones. It's simply where a kid grows. The problem is that the growth plate can be the weak link. What might be a sprain, a strain, or a tear in an adult when they hurt themselves can actually be a growth plate fracture in a kid. So it's important if your kid has hurt themselves and they're not using their arm or they're not able to put weight on a leg, come see one of us get an x-ray and make sure it's not a growth plate fracture. For more information, go to miorthosurgeons.com. They say that 
this is a game of interest, but I disagree. This is a game of desire and will. Four quarters of epic drama that plays out in real time, right before our very eyes. And every season begins the same way, with a desire to win. Those with the will to put in the effort and time put themselves in the best position to achieve their desire. This is why we go to work early and come home late. Why we go so hard and why we put in all these hours. Because we have a desire to be great and the will to become everything we dreamed of and more. So when the drama's thick and it comes down to just those few precious inches, we have no doubt what the outcome will be. Because we have the will to outwork anyone to get what we desire. It doesn't matter if it's inches or a hundred yards. We want it more and we're gonna take it. That's game. As the voice of Michigan Student Athletes, the Student Advisory Council's role is to convey the message of how high school sports are supposed to be played. We were responsible for helping the MHSAA maintain a positive and healthy atmosphere in which interscholastic students can thrive. We believe athletes should be competitive, sportsmanlike, and excel academically. We believe students in the stand should have fun, but not take the focus away from the game. We believe coaches should act as teachers, helping student athletes develop while still keeping high school sports in perspective. We believe that parents should always be positive role models and be supportive of their child's decisions. We believe officials commit their own time to high school sports. And respect should always be shown and given to them. The most important goal for student athletes is to enjoy high school sports. While maintaining a high level of respect for all those involved in the games. Enjoy, enjoy the game! game. at Lawrence Tech, where maybe the best football team in the state of Michigan, the De La Salle Pilots, are having fun again. Brady Drogosh is thrown for three touchdowns, and they got a 28-10 lead over Muskegon at halftime. We got a special guest with us. Larry, can you please say your last name again? Rancilio. Rancilio. Fine, okay, I just no want to make sure that's right, because he told me uh, things have been said wrong before with his last <laughs> name, so I want to make sure it's all right. I've been called worse, like I told you. So. Larry is the president of Warren De La Salle. Glad to have him on the prep as we kick off our coverage here at halftime. Uh, Larry, you're talking to a Catholic League guy here. I am a Catholic Central alum, and there really is this special kinship for everyone who is a part of the Catholic League, but specifically Warren De La Salle. Why is it such a special place to get an education? Well, I will tell you that, first of all, I want to thank everyone in the prep for being here tonight. We're very humbled and appreciative of you guys coming. I know you do a lot of games for us, and, and it is a, you guys do a great production, and we love having you. So thank you for being here, and thank you for coming from Syracuse yeah. like you did to make a special <laughs> trip back home and, and make this special place. But, um, you know, I, I, we, I can go all night about the school and, and what we're all about, and, uh, but you said it best. I mean, all the Catholic schools, especially, you know, guys in the, the schools in our league, Catholic Central, your alma mater, um, Brother Rice, UAD, St. Mary's, we're just special places for, for young men. Um, we do such a great job of educating these, these young men and, and really preparing them for their next step in life. I always talk about um, when people ask me why to go to school, and, you know, all schools around here do a great job educating. I, I never, when a kid comes into school and says, I'm, I'm looking at Brother Rice, I'm looking at CC, I'm looking at Macomb, Dakota. I'm like, you can't make a bad choice. But the experience that they have at our school is so much different. I mean, and, and it's so hard. I mean, I'm an alum, I sent two boys to the school, and, and you know, going to Catholic Central, you have to experience to really know it. We try to get these boys in, in seventh and eighth grade, so at least they come and, and see what the school is all about. But, you know, we, we can brag about our education, um, and, and we've, we've, we had seven all-American um, and all-state athletic teams that were actually athletic and academic teams and two of them won the state championship but you know all in all as, as a president i'm more proud of what they did academically so larry just brought up the couple of state championships De La Salle didn't just won a football state championship last year they also won a basketball state championship because why the heck not dan Rohn, the football head coach is also the athletic director and when we spoke with dan getting ready for this broadcast this week he mentioned how the success athletically 
just leads to the success of the entire school. In your experience, what does having a sound athletic program do for the school as a whole? Well, as, as in any place, I mean, especially, you know, you see with the universities, too, it always gets kids interested in the school, and that's the biggest thing, too. They come. I always say I don't care why our, our kids come to the school. I always say that if they come because they love the cafeteria food, that's fine. We don't care. Athletics is one thing that brings them to the school. It's, it's, you know, sometimes, though, I will tell you, having a great athletic program also keeps kids from coming to school because they, they may think they, they, they're, they don't have an opportunity. And I, I tell every freshman, especially when they come to the school, it doesn't matter what you're doing now. Um, you know, take a look at everything that uh, the school is about. I mean, I had two boys that actually were football, basketball, and baseball players and they ended up swimming at De La Salle. And, and my, my youngest um, just got done at John Carroll. He was an All-American yeah. swimmer. And, but but not – I can brag about my kids all day. But, <laughs> but, but, but just a story to say that they didn't come to La Salle um, to, to swim. So I, I always tell kids, you know, whether it's the, the, the play, whether it's the band, whether it's our robotics program too – you know, we have such a, a well-rounded school, like a lot of the schools, too, but, you know, it's a special place. I, I, I am fortunate to be in the position I'm in. I came from the business world, and, and my wife thinks I'm nuts. I can't wait to get to school and work every day. So, How much fun is that to be part of an experience, a place where you're literally up in the morning? I, I can't wait yes. go to go to work. This is a problem most people wish they uh, could have. Yeah, well, you and I just talked about it. you you, you got to love what you do. And, and, I mean, to be surrounded by young men with vibrancy and – I, I, you know, most kids don't want to come to school. And I can tell you that going to that school every day, and actually the parents tell me, the parents say, well, geez, my boys can't wait till school to start or can't wait to get to school. And I can tell you it's not because of the English class. We have great English classes, but, but it's because of the atmosphere and, and, and you know, I mean, what they remember. And, and, and you understand it because you went to school at CC. And as I said, that's a school that's much like the LaSalle. And I can tell you the people that I meet around Detroit, I mean, on a daily basis, and it's almost like a fraternity. You know, whether you went to Rice or UAD or CC or LaSalle, we all have a kindred spirit. And before we let the president of Warren D. LaSalle, Larry Rancilio, go, we get a couple of minutes here. You're on the clock. You've already been doing this the last few minutes. <laughs> but anyone watching this stream, anyone who's going to watch the replay the next couple of days who goes, that football team's pretty good. That school looks interesting. Why should they choose Warren D. LaSalle? Oh, it's, it's easy. It's the, it, it, I'll tell you, it's, it's the academics. It's the brotherhood. You'll never forget these four years are the most important years in your life. And I tell parents that um, every year. And, and you will never forget these four years. And that's the best thing. From 14 to 18 are such a formative time. And there's not a better place, in, in, I, I say, in the country, but especially in the state of Michigan. Maybe CC, but that's not better. But, it's, uh, but no, I, that's why. And it's, it's, it's an easy sell for me every day. So Can you tell the man's passionate about I love his it. job? <laughs> Larry, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for being here. We really, really appreciate it. Can't wait to have you back, too. So thank appreciate you very it. much. Thank so, you very thanks. much. we got a second half of football coming up. Deal is Sal and Muskegon in a 28-10 ball game. Brady Drogosh has already thrown for three touchdowns. What does he do in the second half? I guess we'll find out together. Come on back. Hi folks, Dr. Joe here with Michigan Orthopedic Surgeons. We all know that our wives and daughters deserve special attention, but that's especially true when it comes to their knees. Do you know that females are at a two to five times risk compared to their male counterparts when it comes to blowing out their knees? It doesn't seem fair, but it's true. The reasons include the way females are made and the way they fire their muscles. But fortunately, there are injury prevention programs out there that can greatly decrease this risk of injury. And if you do know a female who blows out her ACL, don't despair. We have neat, innovative, minimally invasive ways to fix their knees and get them back onto the field. For more information, go to miorthosurgeons.com. If you like well-played, efficient offense, I present to you that first half of football for Warren D. LaSalle. A 28-10 lead. Muskegon did have their cracks offensively stick, but as we look at these first half highlights, we are going to see a lot of efficient offense from D. LaSalle. 
and a lot of great throws and great plays by one of the better quarterbacks in the Midwest, Brady Drogosh. Yeah, but let's uh, get right on into the highlights, and we had a lot of them in the first half. Starting off, first drive of the game, interception by number 11 coming into your screen. He had an absolutely huge first drive, and then you see Drogosh here on the fake handoff running almost into the end zone. They marked it a little short. There was a penalty on that play, so they brought it back, and that brought us to this slant pass right over the middle for a touchdown. And then big number 88 laying the lumber on this hit. And later on, he had a couple sacks in the first half. You love to see that. Another big hit going on right now. And then Drogosh back to work. Nice little flare pass out here. Uh, De La Salle able to get into the end zone. And then the big 81-yard play. Did his knee go down? I don't know. Can't tell. But it doesn't matter because 81 yards later, Muskegon got on the board and got themselves back into the game. And then, of course, 23 from De La Salle, making sure they respond, which they have all day long. Two-point conversion from Drogosh right here. Always good. Wide open play to your tight end. Then a field goal. Takes it to 10 points for Muskegon, and Drogosh answers right back. Massive, massive crossing route right there to big number 25, Tristan Nichols over the middle. And then here's the sacks. I mean, back-to-back -back sacks for number 88, Mason. He, he's had a heck of a first half. Something you put on tape and you send out. Yeah, Mason Moragan had 12 and a half sacks last year. At this rate, he's going to get a third of the way there tonight. Muskegon did get a long touchdown from Piggy, an 80-yard touchdown run in the first quarter. But De La Salle's offense has been fun to watch. And they get the ball to start the second half, and you come on back. I'm Lexi Ayala here at the point where DLS is leading Muskegon 28 to 10. I spoke with DLS head coach Dan Roan pregame and he talked about what it means to build a championship program. He said, of course, you have to know the X's and the O's, but what he prides himself the most on is building relationships. He finds it important that the guys come into his office and have those hard conversations with him, whether that be about their role on the field or what their role could be as a greater purpose, as a human being. And he wants them to take this into the real world. When they go and get a job, they have to be able to walk into their boss's office and have those hard conversations there as well without being intimidated. He wants football to translate over into real life. Evan? Alexi, well, that's an outstanding point you bring up. And allow us for just a second to speak from personal experience. I myself, Evan Stockton, my color analyst extraordinaire, Sam Stickday, we both played high school sports. And obviously, you and I uh, didn't play professionally because we're up here now talking about this. That's right. Those who can't. But, teach. you know, you and I were talking before the game still about the games we played in high school and the lessons we learned. And, yeah, Dan Roan's got a heck of a football team. They may win another state championship game this year. But you'll forget the scores by the time you get a little older like you and I. But what you, we will remember is the life lessons and the moments and the memories. And it really is great when someone keeps it in perspective. Winning and losing. Yeah, it's important, not the only thing. Yeah, the brotherhood that comes along with being in a locker room and just having that fun, is it's unmatched. And I, I heard him talking during the interview. These are the times that you remember for the rest of your life, for sure. I mean, even Matt Schwartz over here, our replay guy, he's got a full YouTube page from his videos when he graduated in 1993. And he's about to get a bunch more views because you shouted it out on live television. Go watch. Westland John Glenn, great team back in the day. Velasquez pops up the kick for Muskegon, and De La Salle is going to get good starting field position. Feels like they have lived in Muskegon's end throughout this game. 
Dealers sell almost surprisingly stick with two timeouts in their back pocket with 90 seconds remaining in the first half. Just ran the ball a few times and took the game to halftime. So now what do you think the uh, modus operandi will be for them on this drive as they start the second half? I mean, I think it's let's put this game away in the third quarter so we don't really have to worry in the fourth quarter. And if you look at the yardage, it's I'm not saying it's even, but it's closer than you'd think with the scoreboard. 222 yards for De La Salle in the first half and 156 for Muskegon. Now, granted, 81 of that came on one play for Muskegon. Drogosh rolling left, throwing on the first play of the second half, and it's juggled and incomplete. Sharon Sutton could not corral the football and Ooh. keep his feet in bounds, but boy, is he close. And, you know, we were talking about it. What's De La Salle going to do? Well, they're going to come out and try to end this game early, and that's exactly it. You roll the pocket, give your quarterback some time. Nice arm on this. Juggle, juggle. Woo! <laughs> that right foot may have been down. I mean, if this was college football, that would definitely be under review. But we're the only ones who get Second to see the replay, and that and everybody else watching at home. Everybody live here, they do not. Someday you and I will make the big bucks and donate and get replay in high school football games across the state. That's something. Freddy Drogas sprinting away from pressure, dragging tacklers ahead. He's close to another first down. You know, that really is an underrated thing about him. He's a hoops player. He looks like one. He's 6'5", but he's also 205, and he drags guys. It's hard to bring him down with one guy. Yeah, he's an athlete. There's just nothing, else, no other way to put it. There he goes again with a good block on the outside. Brady Drogosh busting another one. De La Salle's got a first down. And the refs are blowing a whistle because the player's helmet came off. He's got to check out for one play, I believe. Dead ball, they'll bring him back on. But Drogosh back at it again. You like how De La Salle came out. They're like, all right, we're going to go for it on first down. That didn't work. All right, let's go back to our bread and butter. We're going to run Drogosh up the middle. I believe the phrase is, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's true. Is that correct English? No. Is it a true phrase? Yeah. Both things can be true. Pass caught Sutton. Skegan brings him down. Neely cleans it up. Good game on first for Neely Sapp. Yeah, Muskegon's got to be looking at getting a turnover or something to kind of change the tide because they're getting the vibe again. If they score here, it is going to be an uphill battle the rest of the way. Second down and short for De La Salle. Rogosh to Yanacek. Basketball player to basketball player. First down, De La Salle. Rogosh is bad, complete to number 22, Yanacek. Yanacek well, had a nice little screen pass on one of the touchdowns for De La Salle earlier, so it's nice to feed him a little bit, too. If he's going to be the wide receiver down there doing the dirty work, give him some cheddar. Give him some love. Got a little help on the outside from Sutton, who caught two touchdowns in the first half. Rozier, right and left, into the 30. Rose is knocked up with a big red. That's Piggy on the near side of the field. 25 and 18. We're nose to nose. And you like that? It's because it's right in front of the De La Salle student section too. So you're getting the groans and the the cheers. How many times are we contractually obligated to mention the Bro Zone? I think we've done it three times already. Uh, I'm a big fan of student sections. I think they bring so much to high school sports. So yeah, I, I show love where it's where it's definitely needed. And the Bro Zone is one of the best in the state. My goodness. Man, Brady Drogosh looking like a pinball on Brady that run. Should be enough for another first down for De La Salle. Actually, more than a half yard shot. But that goes back to what you were just saying a couple plays ago. I mean, he's 205. He's going to truck you, too. He's not just there to kind of, you know, take the hits and fall down. He'll deliver some punishment when he has to. Before third down, a flag blows the plate dead. It is starting to get a little chippy here in Southfield. Illegal substitution. Late substitution for Muskegon. And De La Salle gifted a free first down. And you're seeing Rhett Rozier kind of get into it with his man. You're seeing a couple of the linemen. You just saw the defensive back and wide receiver kind of pushing each other a little bit after the play. You can tell both teams want this, and both teams can tell what's on the line right now. Two of the better programs in the state of Michigan year after year. It's still early in the year, though, and that means way too many plays. There's another one on Muskegon. 
lined up in the neutral zone. So really, Muskegon, though, they're, they're at five penalties for about 35 yards Outside today. Seems like there's been more flags thrown, but it, it, they're more just untimely penalties. He <laughs> just flops forward. You <laughs> love that. I mean, Brady gave the right arm going, did you see it? <laughs> That's not legal. Speed gives Sutton. That's not legal. Every single official threw their flag. Yeah, and Sutton is down. I mean, that was, a, that was an aggressive face match. Snap back his neck. I'm glad to see him pop up, get his helmet. But like I said, it's starting to get chippy. These guys are just going to start grabbing and woof right there. My goodness. Yeah, you said it, Stick. I'm glad Sharon Sutton's all right. There's a reason that play's illegal. It's dangerous. Very dangerous. I mean, just imagine running full speed and somebody just turns your head at that rate. It's, it's very dangerous, but these young men pop right up. They're gamers. They're ready to go. Ball placed on the five yard line. First and goal, deal foul. So after the face mask penalty, first down goal for De La Salle. They set up shop just outside the five. A great look on the replay there by our camera crew. Good job, guys. Already three passing touchdowns for Drogosh tonight. Make it four. Number two for Tristan Nichols. How do you stop these pilots? Oh, and what a beautifully designed play. You know, they've been running those slant routes all game long, and it's been very successful. This time, they run the running back across the offense, put him in motion. The two outside wide receivers take the slant, and he sneaks in behind them for the corner route. This is a really great play design and almost impossible to cover. A thing of beauty dropped in the bucket by Brady Drogosh. He threw 12 passing touchdowns all of last season. He has four alone tonight. Last week, passing the football, he was perfect. Seven for seven, three passing touchdowns. He didn't even play the second half against Detroit Renaissance. He's playing a little longer tonight, and those numbers are still eye-popping. I mean, <laughs> what more can you say about him? You know, there's the bro zone. They're into it. They're waving their towels. They're having a good time tonight. And wow, Drogosh is having himself a game. But this is what we talked about. That's why he was one of our identified key players of the game, because he's the guy that can deliver it both sides. You know, he can run, he can pass, and you're seeing he has great tempo and control and touch even on that pass. What is De La Salle proving to the state of Michigan by the way they're playing tonight and by the way Brady Drogosh is throwing the football? Or is this just something we knew already? Well, I think before the game, me and you kind of discussed this, this was kind of a litmus test for both teams, right? This is to see where Muskegon is at and with their young guys, how they're going to be. And this is a test for De La Salle to see if they're still legit from last year. And all things considered, they're still legit. They have won 20 of their last 21. And they're on their way to 21 out of 22. Cummings kicks it away. No chance for a return. There was a high school fantasy league. I'm drafting Cummings on my team. Now are you drafting him for his skill? Yes. Okay. And appearance. I just love defensive linemen that are kickers. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. You know, Brother Rice has an offensive lineman, Eric Dougherty, who is their punter, right? Okay. Yeah. I He's like six, that. Five, two, I'll dig that too, man. Muskegon back in the field. Makai Guy, the quarterback, with Destin Piggy behind him. Piggy has run for the only Muskegon touchdown of the night. Give, spin it ahead. De La Salle will swarm him down after a gain of about five on first down. In today's ever-changing real estate and mortgage lending world, the importance of a true professional has never been higher. At Success Mortgage Partners, our mission is for every borrower to receive level 10 service and our goal is to get to the lowest rate possible. We want you to have the experience of a lifetime. Navigating a turbulent market like this needs to be handled by a real pro. So call Todd Barr, 734-674-6154 and put 20 years of local knowledge to use for you and your family. 
I'm looking at some of the stats. Makai Guy with room. Griffin Phillips brings him down. Muskegon may be down carry. in this game, but you got to give credit, Stick, where Back it's due. That offensive line has done a good Phillips. job opening holes for Makai Guy all evening. Yeah, and that's what I was just going to say. Looking at these stats, they've only completed two passes this game. So every ounce of their offense has come from the running game. So if I'm Muskegon, i got to keep going back to that running game. The passing game is not working. And if I'm De La Salle, I know this, right? So I'm going to stack. I'm going to put eight guys, nine guys, ten guys in the box so they can prove that they can beat me over the top. Johnson bouncing back right. Found room again. First down, Muskegon again. Barry Sanders-esque type move, run into the line, pop out, and go around the end for a nice 12-yard pickup. Watch here, hand off up the middle, run into your lineman, nothing there, all right, I'm gonna get outside. And deliver a hit to your safety. When Muskegon's rolled offensively tonight, it has been because of that ground game. Guy kept it. Kept running forward, a lot of moving parts. When Muskegon's offense is rolling, there are a lot of moving parts. It's hard to find the football. The Kai guy kept it and gained another first down. And that's been what has been successful for Muskegon this game, right up the middle, attacking De La Salle. They had the one big play to the outside, but other than that, just going right at these guys with your quarterback and the extra blocker as the running back has been their most successful plays. Big red starting to march toward De La Salle's red zone here. Swinging it out to Piggy. A rare completed pass. He has a slippery pack to bring down. They finally do get him down. They stick, we're coming up on the halfway mark of the third quarter. The score is what it is. Muskegon needs a rally. But there is a ton of good that they can take away from this game. They're facing a pretty scary De La Salle defense, and they're finding holes consistently running that football. Yeah, it took them a couple drives, right, to figure out where they can move the ball and whatnot. And I love that last play. Yes, it's a short pass, but that's just an extension of the running play, right? You want to get Piggy out in space. Guy slipped a tackle. Slipped another one. He limboed out of the tackle of James McDonald. It was almost like a break dancing move. He fell back on one hand, you know. Yes, right here. Whoop. Slide to the left. <laughs> Mr. C's out here. The Kai guy can cha cha real smooth. Oh boy. All right, third down for Muskegon. Passing scenario, and they've only completed two passes tonight. On the ground, Piggy. Got a block from Johnson. The legs churning. He is short of the first down, but it's a much more manageable fourth down. What a huge block by Johnson on that outside, because that was not going to be a very productive play. Shane Fairfield, one of the finer head coaches in the state of Michigan. We are talking about this earlier. 13 seasons, 131 wins. A fistful of state final appearances. But right now he's focused on a fourth down as Julian Neely's back at the quarterback spot. Straight run left. Trying to wade through the offensive line and De La Salle's defensive line made a stand. They can do it on both sides of the ball. And Griffin Phillips, after his first interception, is coming off the field now too, doing the same thing. Flexing, just all hype, ready to go. Stopping them one yard short on fourth down. Huge, huge, huge play for the De La Salle defense. First down. Muskegon started to lean ahead and De La Salle's defense, then don't break. Brady Drogosh back onto the field at least one more time. He has already thrown for four touchdowns tonight. Conducting this offense like a maestro. Well, you mentioned he didn't play in the second half last game. Wants to take a deep shot, a guy's wide open. He missed Janicek. Overshot him by half a fingertip. 
Oof. And that's where I was going with it. If they score here, I think he's pretty much done for the game, right? But man, that, that could have been the death blow right there and could have given him an early night. Wide open, beautiful spiral too. I think he just got a little too excited, put a little too much fire on that. He lost that up there, lets him run underneath it. Easy touchdown. Well, there's the old cliche that the hardest ball to catch as a wide receiver is the one where you're wide open. Yep. Sometimes the hardest pass to complete for a quarterback is one where the guy's wide open. Yep. If you're playing Madden, you want to just tap the button. You don't want to hold it down and rifle it. Unfortunately, we have an injured big red on the far side of the field. Brings action to a halt. Four and a half to go in the third quarter. Looks like he's cramping. They're just rubbing his uh, calf there. Gives us a chance to highlight one of the best football coaches going in the Midwest. Dan Rohn, third season, a 23-5 record on his way to 24-5 tonight. Two years and two trips to the state finals with De La Salle. They won it last year over Traverse City Central. Moved to the east side of the state from the west side, where he won four state titles with Grand Rapids West Catholic. You know, Stiga was interesting. Talking with Dan Rohn earlier this week, a question was asked of Dan about, hey, you're moving from the west side of the state to the east side of the state. Is that a challenge? Any adjustment you had to make? And he said, yeah, I mean, there's adjustment to anything in life, right? Moving from one job to another job. But what I value is relationships and community and the chance to lead the athletic program at De La Salle. He's also the athletic director. Uh, the, the value of the relationships that I have made these first few years at Warren De La Salle already, the relationships I'll have for the rest of my life. And talking with him, getting ready for this game, just watching him coach his young men on the sidelines. It's hard not to be impressed with what he's building at De La Salle, a uh, athletic program that is the reigning football and basketball state champions. And you could just tell they take great pride in not only what they do on the field, but off the field and how these young men support each other, how they're there for each other, how they build a, a brotherhood through going to a school like De La Salle. And it, it starts at the top, right? Attitude reflects leadership. And when you got men like this leading the way, you're going to have great results. Did you just slip in a Remember the Titans reference? Uh, you know, I, I've been known to slip in. So I, I have no original thoughts. I just repeat what I've heard. That sounds like most of humanity, honestly. <laughs> Don't we all just repeat things we heard once? Because that's how we learn how to speak. Well, then back to American History X, that movie. You know, quote somebody because somebody's already said it better than you can. I've actually never seen that one. So Great movie. I, got, I guess I got an assignment when I go home. Today. There we go. Brady Drogosh on the run. You'd have to imagine De La Salle is going to be keeping this ball on the ground a lot as they try to milk some clock here on this drive stick. Yeah, you would think so here in the second half. I mean, you saw him come out in the first play of the second half. They went for it. You saw one play earlier here. They went for it. So maybe on first downs, they're going to try to bomb it. But other than that, let's just keep running the ball. Keep the clock running. On cue, they want to throw. Tristan Nichols catch. On that pattern, they've been running all night. It's like clockwork. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. That's, I believe, four for four or five for five on that curl route. And, you know, not to beat a dead horse with it, but you could tell those two work on that ad nauseum because that is just strictly timing. And when you have that between a wide receiver and a quarterback, no matter who your DB is, it's tough to defend. And you're setting your DB up for a little pump and go action, too. They're pulling all the right strings tonight. Drogosh stepping up, running away from pressure. Now he's brought down. Brady Drogosh with the carry. Pursuit to the Brought ball for the Big Reds, and Terrence, Terrence Davis, Davis Jr. Jr. finally got him. And that was a smart play, nothing there. Take it down, keep the clock running. You know, you, you picked up three to five yards. Ball spotted at the 45 yard line. Second down and seven for the Pilots. So second down for De La Salle. Brad Rozier up the middle, lowering the right shoulder and then the left. Rozier, Third down and very short coming up. Brought down by number 24. Count Something David interesting Peter. we saw earlier in the game. Red Rozier tried to throw a pass. Straight ground game here. Ball placed at the 49 yard line. Third and one for the Pilots. Yeah, it was a design pass for them. And, you know, they got athletes all over the field. And you want to get guys involved, you want to get them into the game. Red is a pitcher on the baseball team. Drogosh leaning ahead, Brady tough to Drogosh stop that big body. Keeper. Another first down for De La Salle on what could be the final drive of the game for all the starters for De La Salle. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, it's only the third quarter. 
But then you completed the sentence. <laughs> yeah, and De La Salle, I mean, looking towards the next part of the season, and then once they get into their Catholic League, and, you know, those are always tough, tough divisional games. If you can make it through that, you usually have a pretty smooth run through the straight state playoffs. Drogosh to throw. A lot of time. A gorgeous deep ball. Jack Janicek, short of the goal line. He got him that time. Brady Drogosh just keep cutting all these throws up and put them on the highlight tape. But that's exactly what we were talking about. The reason he missed the first one is he kind of rifled it and threw it on the line. This one, look how much touch, look how much air is underneath that. And it gives your wide receiver time to locate it, run underneath it. And there you go, right on the goal line. Knock it on the door for another touchdown here for De La Salle. They'll take Drogosh out and run single wing with Rhett Rozier. They like to do this down near the goal line. And this is where the big fellas eat. They ran this play for a touchdown in the state title game last year. Snap back to Rozier. He's gonna throw. Catch! Touchdown, Mason Moragan! I mean, I know Drogosh has had an incredible game, but if we were picking MVPs, Mason's got to be in that conversation. Multiple sacks, huge hits, and now a touchdown for the young man? It's a heck of a catch, and Rozier put it in the right spot. What you mentioned earlier, they tried to throw it with him, so obviously he has that in the toolkit. Just barely beating the defender. Here's a pitcher on the baseball team. What's that? Fastball, slider? What do you think? Definitely a fastball. On the outside corner for a touchdown. Did you see he threw that ball? Getting all the hugs today, and he deserves them, man. <laughs> My goodness. Another PAT tack through for Landon Riska. Guy who's been okay, kicking man, since he was in middle school. The by East side of the state Landon against the west the side of the yet, state. On an early September Friday night. And East Side is ruling tonight. Hello, future pilots. I want to personally invite you to attend our future pilot appreciation night taking place on Friday, September 9th from 6 to 9 p.m. We want to invite all students in all grades from any school to come experience the brotherhood of De La Salle Collegiate. During the evening, you'll receive free admission to the event, a ticket for some free pizza, and some De La Salle swag bags. We look forward to seeing you on Friday, September 9th from 6 to 9 p.m. And until then, God bless and go Pilots. Brett Rozier just threw a touchdown pass for De La Salle, and the Pilots are up 42 to 10. Cummings booms away another kick into the end zone. A few more points for Sticks Fantasy. Team. <laughs> <laughs> Told you you should have drafted him in the third round like I did. Everybody said I went for a kicker way too early. Nah. -uh. I actually have I think three fantasy drafts on Monday or Tuesday. Nice. And I have done zero planning. See, I also get his defensive stats, too, with the kicker. So, you know, cheating the game. It's called hacking the system. <laughs> All right, so there's He's about... my flex. Right, there you go. All right, so about 100 seconds to go in the third quarter. Yep. And anyone just flipping on this game as they're checking scores across the state of Michigan on a Friday night, yeah, you can see the score, but frankly, this is not indicative of the way that Muskegon has operated offensively today. The Kai guy keeps... Gains a few on first down. Stick, we've been talking about this throughout the third quarter. Muskegon has found success running the football. It's just these drives keep stalling as they approach the red zone. Yeah, and that's the problem, you know. As the, as the field shrinks, the defenders get a little bit closer, a little bit closer, a little bit closer, and it's tough to spread the field and use your athleticism against them. But this is what they've had success with today, and, you know, minimal success, only 10 points on the board right now. But when they have had it, it's been off runs like that. Kai Guy and Julian Neely have shuffled at the quarterback spot. Guy was the starter, and he's gotten more of the snaps. How did they get that ball to Piggy? They bring him down for a loss, but frankly, I need to see a replay because 
And this is some sort of magic trick to even get Piggy the ball because there were three pilots surrounding Makai Guy as he handed the ball off. Yeah, and guess who one of them was? Big number 88, Mason, in there again, just blowing through the backfield. <laughs> Him at 68 absolutely blow up the quarterback. And the fact that they got the handoff off is more impressive than anything else on that play. I'm laughing because I'm trying to put myself in the mind of Makai Guy. And as he got hit by two guys, he's probably thinking, oh, one wasn't enough? Right. You had to bring the extra one? But this is why I, I'm not sure why they haven't tried screen passes, right? De La Salle is an over-aggressive defense. Use that against them. Let them pressure the quarterback. Let them almost hit him, then just boop, right over the top of their heads. Probably the final play of the third quarter. Pitch to Piggy. And he's going to be short of a first down. It'll be fourth down when we start the fourth quarter. Two of the best. It's 42 to 10. Hi folks, Dr. Joe here again with Michigan Orthopedic Surgeons. Everywhere you look this time of year, people are running. And that's a great thing because running is an excellent exercise, especially for your cardiovascular and musculoskeletal systems. But the question is, are you running a safe running program? All too often, people are hobbled by things like shin splints and patellar tendonitis. But luckily, simple things like stretching and warm up, the right running shoes, and realistic weekly mileages can keep you in your running game. For more information, go to miorthosurgeons.com. What rhymes with great? Participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the diamond. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. Participate! <laughs> Back to start the fourth quarter, Muskegon trailing by a bunch, so they'll keep the offense on the field, fourth down short. Guy running, and he is down for a loss. Peyton Babich got him. De La Salle makes it second different fourth down stand of the night. Putting a capper on what's been one heck of a night. Well, we talked about that earlier in the game, too, for Muskegon. They had about eight turnovers last game. This game, if we count the turnover on fourth downs, they're at about four or five right now. And the, the, you cannot win ball games, especially against teams like De La Salle, turning the ball over like that. 42 to 10. Gentlemen, we have a winner. Two seconds into the fourth quarter. Thank you so very much. And Brady Drogosh is back out for at least one more drive. That's surprising to me. On the ground, Aaron White on the stretch give left. Gain of a handful on first down. All right, I'm, I'm going to give you a dangerous power here. I'm going to let you be the head coach of Warren De La Salle. Okay. Would you have brought Brady Drogosh back out? No. Why not? Um, there's, what do you have to gain? Right? He's proven that he's mastered the offense. He's proven that he can throw the ball. He's proven that he can run the ball. You're up 32 points, 11 minutes to go. What's the benefit of having your experienced quarterback out there? And I, Coach Dan's a lot smarter guy than me when it comes to football, so I'm not questioning him. I'm just saying personally, I wouldn't. I'll play devil's advocate with you here in a second, after second down and seven. Drogosh keeps. Blocking the outside with a flag. Multiple flags. With the keeper. So here's the other side, of bounds, right? Number two, Julian yeah, Hill. you're up 42 to 10. We watched the replay here. It looks like De La Salle gets a holding on the outside. But I like how smart he is, too, and this is part of probably the reason why Dan trusts him. He's running out of bounds. He's not running towards contact. Yeah, here's the other side. 
Uh, the starters for De La Salle played a quarter and a half last week against Detroit Renaissance. They play in one of the better football conferences in Metro Detroit in the Catholic League. Catholic Central bounced back tonight. Looks like they're going to beat Davison. Well, the Rice lost a heartbreaker on a last second All field goal to East Kenwood. He knows that these guys need game reps no matter the situation. And there is experience in salting away a win like this. They're going to have to, in theory, in the playoffs come October, November. Listen, having your best player on the field at any time is a good thing, right? You want him out there. Slant pattern caught. Jack Janicek across the 20. That slant pattern Janicek. is one of the weapons of mass destruction for the Pilots four. tonight. Everyone must play a bunch. The ball spotted at the 19-yard line. Play results in a first down. First Island. touchdown pass of the game for Drogosh was zipped over the middle to Sharon Sutton. Sharon caught the first two touchdowns of the game. Chauncey Shaw has the only rushing touchdown of the game. <laughs> Damian King the fourth on the carry for De La Salle. That is a freshman. Getting the carry for the pilots. Let's see that every day. And here you go. They're pulling the quarterback now, giving him a round of applause, bunch of high fives. Great game for Drogosh. Uh, he ends leaving 11 of 15, 128 yards, averaging 8.5 yards per pass, four touchdowns on the day. So Brady's day is done. Dylan Trondle, the junior backup in the game. Still in second generation is Dad Jerry a deal of Sal alarm. Another give, another big run, and another deal of Sal touchdown. It's Landon Bolesky. What a night to be a pilot. Yeah, we wondered what it was going to be like coming into this game, right? Can De La Salle still have the strength that they had last year with missing or uh, losing a couple starters and bringing in some new guys? And they have shown that they are just as strong as ever. And that's what good programs do, right? They, they graduate one great class, and then they bring in another great class. And De La Salle definitely has all the class in this game. I believe that takes us to a running clock after the next kickoff, correct? You are correct. After 35 points, we start running the clock. De La Salle has missed one PAT today. First one, very first. When in Riska, other than that, has been perfect tonight. It's been kicking since he was a middle schooler. Janicek gets the snap down and the PAT right through. So De La Salle with a 49-10 lead, under 10 minutes to go. Let's go down to the sidelines and the third member of our crew, Lexi Ayala. Thanks, Evan. I'm here with Director of Admissions, Zach Issa. Zach, I, I have to know, other than an outstanding championship football program, how do you sell De La Salle? It's a great question. Thanks for having us, Lex. De La Salle is an opportunity for every student that's looking to pursue excellence in everything we do. Obviously, tonight, you know, you're seeing a lot of our great student athletes out here on the football field, um, but we have a lot of more to offer De La Salle students and prospective students alike. Uh, we have eSports, we have band, we have music, we have an arts program, we have ski clubs. So we have a lot to offer kids, and that's really what my job entails, is really to be able to communicate all the wonderful opportunities that De La Salle has for all different types of prospective students that are looking for a quality high school education. That's amazing, Zach. And I'm, I'm jealous over here going from a small school and seeing everything that De La Salle has to offer. And, Zach, tell me about, you have something going special going on next week, right? Yeah, we have our future uh, pilot appreciation night next Friday, September 9th, down at Wayne State, Tom Adams Field. We invite all De La Salle prospective students in any grade, first through eighth grade, to join us for free. We'll roll out the purple carpet for you, be a VIP, get some uh, De La Salle swag, and enjoy the game on us. It's a great opportunity to see what the true brotherhood of De La Salle really means. Awesome. Thanks, Zach. Make sure to be there. A purple carpet is much better than a ride carpet. Am I right? All right, Evan, back to you. All right, Lex, thank you. Again, I don't know what to make of this. Let's just talk about it. Lexi Ayala showed up to the broadcast today wearing purple and yellow, and it did not occur to her until I brought it up to her 30 minutes before kickoff. You know you look like you go to De La Salle, right? 
She told me she thought she uh, looked like the Lakers. Which is true. Both I, things can be true. I mean, I appreciate you sticking up for our on our teammates, Dick, but I'm trying to make a point. Well, you know, I, yeah. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. But, yeah, she, you know, she knew we were going to the De La Salle game. Swing pass to the outside, and Piggy makes the catch. She's the guy who has the only yeah, touchdown yeah, of the game for Muskegon. Had an 80-yard touchdown run in the run first half. And what a touchdown run that was, honestly. Explosive. He was breaking tackles. And this is kind of just an extended run play. Those are, I mean, that's their fourth completion of the game today. And two of them have been run plays like that. Julian Neely is now in at quarterback. Makai Guy and Neely have pretty much alternated series in the second half. Guy's been more of a runner. Neely's been more of a thrower. On cue, we'll throw again. Evading pressure and then getting what he can as James McDonald brings him down. Neely with the keeper. Score is what it is, Stick. And we've continually made the point in this broadcast that Muskegon has found ways to get the ball down the field, but the drives keep stalling on them. Yeah. When they hit the Boston head home tonight, what do you think that coaching staff will be thinking about? Uh, you know, the message I'm, I'm sure they're going to give to the team is, look, we, we can hang with those guys, right? If we don't shoot ourselves in the foot with some penalties and we add a little bit of aerial attack to our game, we could probably hang with these guys at some point. But right now, early in the season, we got to grow into that team. De La Salle is there. We need to grow into that team. And that's what I think they're taking away from this game is they have the skills to hang. They're just not the, quite there yet as a team. They're going back home to take on Reese Puther a week from tonight. And then you got the two Zealand schools for the big rides, East and West. At East on the 16th, home against West on the 23rd. Two Union, end of the month on the 30th. And Wyoming, Holland, that big game against Mona Shores, October 22nd, and the playoff start. Good throw across the middle. Neely finds his intended target. It's to Carrion Taylor and a first down for Muskegon. And what a great play. Did you see that? That was a very creative play. You fake the screen to the right side flat. Look at this, little fake screen. Nope, nope, Ball boom. Going to throw the slant, pick up a nice little 25-yard chunk right there. That was a great creative play, and that's what I'm wondering why they haven't done that more. When you're playing an aggressive defense like a De La Salle, you want to get them moving. So you want to run pump fakes. You want to run reverses. You want to just get them out of position by using their aggressiveness against them. Slithering up the middle. Nice gain for Johnson. Up at Programming note for you. If Muskegon scores here, the running clock stops. Line, this game got kicked off about 45 minutes after the scheduled time is 7 o'clock. JV game ran a little long. They play all three levels here today. Neely on the roll, a man's wide open. Diving catch, Taylor again. He's been the man on this drive. And he is frustrated because there was nobody around him for about 20 yards for a good three to five seconds. He was just kind of standing there near the end zone, nothing going on, nobody guarding him. Just not enough arm strength to get it there for, to get him the touchdown. Standing there going, anyone? Hello? No. No. Bueller? Throw me the ball. Again, I, I just made a Ferris Bueller's Day Off reference. None of the people watching this game know who that is. No, that's so classic. We do know this. It's a touchdown for Muskegon. Wanyai Johnson into the end zone. Johnson's had a pretty nice game, too. He's had some nice blocks. He's had a couple nice carries, and there you go, getting into the end zone. And this is what you like to see out of Muskegon, right? You, you don't want them to just lay down except the L. They're fighting back. They're fighting through this game. They're still in it. They're still caring enough to score. And that says a lot about the young men and about how this coach is grooming his team. Coaches tell you all the time, Stick, it's one of those cliches from a football coach that you hear so many times you forget that it doesn't, it rings true for a reason, as the extra point from Velasquez is no good. You learn a lot about your team in late game stages where the game is essentially over. De La Salle is obviously going to win this game. But Muskegon is learning a lot about the makeup of their guys as they continue to compete down the stretch against a team in De La Salle that, frankly, if 
there was one state champion in the state of Michigan, this may be the team that wins it. Yeah, yeah, across all conferences and right. all levels and all divisions. Uh, yeah, and that's what, that's what I like about what Muskegon just did there. They could have easily just tried to run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, but no, they dropped back, they threw some passes, which, you know, obviously the defensive changes a little bit, but for them to get a touchdown there, that's huge for them heading out of this game. What rhymes with great? Participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the diamond. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. Participate. <laughs> Great matchup on a Friday night on Labor Day weekend. The Muskegon Big Reds have run into the De La Salle buzzsaw. The Pilots are about to win their 21st out of their last 22 games. Chance for a return for the Pilots. And they'll be tackled as they cross the 20 with 5.12 to go. In today's ever-changing real estate and mortgage lending world, the importance of a true professional has truly never been higher. At Success Mortgage Partners, our mission is for every borrower to receive level 10 service, and our goal is to get you the lowest rate possible. We want you to have the experience of a lifetime. Navigating a turbulent market like this needs to be handled by a real pro, so call Todd Barr. He's at 734-674-5154 and put 20 years of local knowledge to use for you and your family. Proud to have Success Mortgage Partners on board for the prep broadcasts all throughout this fall into the winter. As many of you know, the prep doesn't just cover high school football, also high school basketball, the Motor City Crews. Plenty of opportunities. Make sure to go check out all the social media channels and the prep's website. Those cruise games are fun, man. I got to do a couple of them last year. You and I did one last year. That is true. Big win over the Lakeland Magic. <laughs> it was my first time working with you, too. I believe I met you 10 minutes before we took the air, because <laughs> I also had a game in Kalamazoo that day. You could have never told him. I appreciate you saying that. Thank you. By the way, I just want it on record. And I will be at every single Motor City Cruise game this year, Stick. You know why? A certain young man will be playing for that basketball team who went to a school that I enjoy. Okay. Buddy Bayheim. Oh, nice. Did you not know that Buddy Bayheim is currently signed by the Detroit Pistons? I knew that. I did not know that that was your guy, though. I mean, it's Buddy Bucket. How can he not be? <laughs> Jim Bayheim's son, man. We have added somebody to the Syracuse alumni group in Metro Detroit. It's me, Matt Derry, Mike Tarico. And now Buddy Behai. You went to Syracuse? No, I just tell people that. Okay. Yeah, I thought you went to Western, right? Yeah. Well, hey, hey, help pay the bills. Don't scoff on the Broncos, man. I had many a good nights in Kalamazoo. Backups are into the game for De La Salle. And we have a delay of game on the Pilots. By the way, do we have a score update on Michigan State, Western Michigan? First kick of the year in East Lansing? I have been so locked in on this game, I really didn't even think about it. Hang on, we've got the technology to find out this information. Indiana beating Indi uh, Illinois, 13-10, first half. Dylan Trondle into the game. He replaced Brady Drogosh on the last drive. First year on varsity for Dylan. Went three for three passing last week. Gonna try and throw it here. Pressure's coming, and he wisely throws it away. That's actually like a veteran move right there, you know? He didn't try to force it, he didn't try to make a play. It wasn't there, just get rid of it, live for another down. Oh, I don't want to concern any Spartan fans watching this ball game, but it is a 21-13 Spartans. 15 seconds into the fourth quarter, and the Broncos have the football. Don't sleep on Western Michigan, man. They always put out one or two good pros. They always have one or two guys on their team that can make a difference. And in college football, sometimes that's all you need. Sky Moore, a high draft pick last year out of the Broncos. Yeah, for Kansas City Chiefs. Now, some have said that Sky Moore is going to have to replace Tariq Hill. 
That's nice. To which Sky Moore would probably <laughs> say, why are you putting this on me again? Why, yeah. why, is, why is this my assigned job? It's Can I just be, play football? It's going to be different in Kansas City. You know, they got Juju Smith-Schuster in there this year. Tariq Hill left. Sky Moore, the rookie. But, you know, as long as Travis Kelsey and Pat Mahomes are alive, you're going to have a good offense. Uh, that's, a, that's a strong opinion there. Uh, you know, I, I bring the hot, hot takes. Three and a half to go. Julian Neely just drove the Big Reds down the field for a touchdown. And they do it again. Dropped the ball, picked it back up. Ended up working out. The old fumble ruski, just right. like you drew it up. Right. Drop it, the defense, they shift their eyes to the ball, pick it up and run. Let's watch this again. Second and two for the big red ball placed on the 30. That's crazy when a football just bounces straight up and down. The odds of that are just so rare. It's like watching a hockey game, right? The way that puck bounces. Yeah, you never know. Neely got a throw. It's caught by Piggy. First down, Muskegon with a flag. A couple of them. Another face mask coming. Yeah, he's so quick. He's so, like, just tough to get a hold of. You grab anything you can, it looks like they got a face mask on that play. But man, Piggy has been fun to watch when you get him in space, look at. Now as a defender, you know you can guard the inside and force him to that boundary. That boundary is almost like another defender, so taking the outside position on that, probably not the best case scenario. Nice look at the scoreboard here. Beautiful facility here at Lawrence Tech, by the way. Yeah, and they've done a great job hosting us all day long. So Lawrence Tech, thank you guys for the hospitality. It's becoming a bit of a high school football hotbed. The big rivalry game between Catholic Central and Brother Rice will be played here a couple of weeks. The Boys Bowl. Johnson bouncing up the middle, ran for the touchdown on the last drive. Catholic Central on pace to win today against Davison. They were up by 16 with two minutes left. So CC would move to one and one. De La Salle fans still watching our broadcast will appreciate the updates of the Catholic League scores. Yeah, St. Mary's won yesterday. Saw that game in the prep. Big one over Hudsonville. Another East versus West matchup too. Hudsonville versus Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Jermaine Gonzalez getting his first win as Orchard Lake St. Mary's first new head coach in over 30 years. Belated congratulations. Replacing George Porritt is an unenviable task. Nope, it, it, it is tough. Seven state championships in football alone is, is tough to do. But he also had lacrosse in there, basketball state championship. George Port is a man that wore many hats and wore every hat very well. And every St. Mary's alum who was watching that broadcast yesterday and flipped on our <laughs> game tonight is going, trust us, Dick, we know. Yep. We I heard of the man. He was a good coach. Yes, he was. I was lucky enough to play for him. High snap, Neely Fields running up the middle. Ooh, big head as he got inside the five. Neil LaSalle shuffling through the depth chart. Nice hit on the play by Mason Collins. Mason Collins coming up and laying the lumber on that. Look at this hit right here at the end. Perfect, too. Shoulder down, didn't leave with his head. That's exactly what you want. Final drive of the game for Muskegon. Can they cap the night with a touchdown? Not gonna happen on that play. Johnson wrapped up in the hole beautifully. Sal Agrusa with a beautiful form tackle. Yeah, he filled that gap really nice. He was able to wrap his arms around the defender and just kind of rodeo hog tie him to the ground. Make sure to follow all of the prep social media channels, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. They are all there. Coverage like this coming all fall and winter long. And there's your final play of the game for Muskegon. Neely's pass into the end zone, knocked away. Gio Petrielli on the coverage for the Pilots. You know, 
Stick, you and I were talking about this when we took the air tonight. Litmus test for both teams. And frankly, the score line is going to stink for Muskegon, but I think both teams did learn a lot, right? De La Salle learned that Brady Drogosh's passing ability. If you didn't believe in it before, you can sure believe in it now after four touchdowns tonight. And Muskegon, again, although the score line looks more lopsided than frankly this game was, their offense found a way to move up and down the field. And a young team that'll get better every single week gonna learn a lot from the way they played tonight. Yeah, and that late score for them I think is huge. Getting back on that bus, you feel a little bit better about yourself. Yeah, 49 to 16, not ideal. But at the end of the game, you were still fighting, and that's something you can hang your hat on as a program. Hey, LaSalle doesn't have to snap it one more time, and they won't. Handshakes and high fives coming after another win for right now what probably is the preeminent high school football program in the state of Michigan. De La Salle, the reigning state champs in Division II. They have won 21 out of their last 22. They faced a test from the west side of Michigan tonight. Passed it with ease. Brady Drogosh, four more passing touchdowns for the Pilots. A 49 to 16 win over Muskegon. We're back to wrap it up after this. Hi folks, Dr. Joe here again with Michigan Orthopedic Surgeons. Everywhere you look this time of year, people are running. And that's a great thing because running is an excellent exercise, especially for your cardiovascular and musculoskeletal systems. But the question is, are you running a safe running program? All too often, people are hobbled by things like shin splints and patellar tendonitis. But luckily, simple things like stretching and warm up, the right running shoes, and realistic weekly mileages can keep you in your running game. For more information, go to miorthosurgeons.com. Back at Lawrence Tech, highly anticipated matchup between the Pilots of Warren De La Salle and the mighty Big Reds of Muskegon. Muskegon's offense did move the ball up and down the field tonight, but the offense for De La Salle just absolutely electric. Evan Stick, Lexi back with you, wrapping it up on the prep. Stick, as we look at the highlights from this game, why show anything else than the fireworks that De La Salle gave us all night long, offense, offensively and defensively? Yeah, it started here in pretty much the first drive of the game. Big interception by number 11, and then a nice little slant pass over the middle by Drugish getting on the board. This play was called back for holding but it set them up really nicely for this play right here. Nice running play right up the gut for the touchdown for number 23. And then, of course, Drogish doing his thing. This is a two-point conversion, wide open two-point conversion. And then here you go. I mean, this is just De La Salle highlight after De La Salle highlight. Nice little slant pass over the middle, straight up. Nobody's touched him, and that's tough. When you can get in the end zone without being touched, and then here they go on defense. Every time Muskegon dropped back to pass, 88 was there. And here's Drogish again on another. This was an excellent play. Two slants on the outside, and the running back comes out and runs a little uh, corner route. And then look, another, another play right there. Big number 88 involved again. And then, of course, they just keep handing the ball off. And keep, I mean, that's when you score 49 points, it's going to be a lot of De La Salle highlights. And that's exactly what it was here at the end. We're looking at uh, Alexi down there right now, waiting to talk to the coach, getting some interviews from players of the game. 
But a great game. I mean, for both sides. Listen, Muskegon's going to hop on the bus. They're not going to be happy about the final score, but they can be happy about how hard they fought this entire game. Back for more post game right after this. They say that this is a game of interest, but I disagree. This is a game of desire and will. Four quarters of epic drama that plays out in real time, right before our very eyes. Every season begins the same way, with a desire to win. Those with the will to put in the effort and time put themselves in the best position to achieve their desire. This is why we go to work early and come home late. Why we go so hard and why we put in all these hours. Because we have a desire to be great and the will to become everything we dreamed of and more. So when the drama's thick, when it comes down to just those few precious inches, we have no doubt what the outcome will be. Because we have the will to outwork anyone to get what we desire. It doesn't matter if it's inches or 100 yards. We want it more, and we're going to take it. That's game. I'm Lexi Ayala here with De La Salle's head coach, Dan Roan. Coach. Like taking cookies out of the cookie jar. How'd you get it done offensively, 49 to 16? You know, we know we got a lot of weapons and a lot of kids that have played a lot of football for us. So Tristan Nichols, Jack, Sutton, Rhett, they're all good athletes. They've been around for a while. And our O-line is getting better. And so as they continue to grow, I think we can do some things offensively. And it takes a lot of pressure off our defense. And you coined Sutton as one of your dark horses. What did he do tonight that made him stand out? You know, he just keeps getting better. And he's one of those guys every day. Every day at practice, he's working hard, and he's he probably had one of our best off season, one of our pound for pound strongest kids, and you know they really like to see him get rewarded and opportunities, and he made plays. So excited for him, excited for the other guys, and you know I thought our defensive line played pretty well too at times. They they split us a couple times and made some runs, but we cleaned those things up and played good in the in third and fourth quarter. Who and what was the biggest strength of your D line tonight? You know I think the fact that they're just super disciplined, and, and they they. Brandon Bush, our defensive coordinator, does a tremendous job of game planning these guys. So, you know, their ability to really squeeze things and play the run and the pass, and you don't really get that too much at this level. You see kids that are really good at maybe squeezing blocks, but not so good at pass rushing, but we got some kids that can do it all. Mason Moragan's a special football player. Coach, what did Mason Moragan do tonight that stood out? He, he played his style of football. I mean, you've seen, in my opinion, I've been saying it since I got to deal with Sal, I think Mason Moragan's probably one of the best defensive linemen in the state of Michigan. And, he showed it tonight in Illinois. He's getting a great kid and not only a great football player, but a great leader, a great kid in the classroom and someone we're super proud of. Thanks, Coach. What does this win mean moving forward for the rest of the season? You know, it, it, to us, we talk about a process, and this is part of the process. And, you know, a goal is to win a state championship. And if you can win all the games along the way, that's that's great. That's icing on the cake. But we want to make sure we get better. And I, I think we got better today. Now we have to get back to work tomorrow morning and, and get in the weight room and get a good run in and, and hopefully get better for a good UAD team. Trust in the process and loving each other. That's the message. Thanks, Coach. Congrats on the win. Thank you. Appreciate it. Belated congrats to Dan Roan on another win. You know, the numbers just kind of speak for themselves here. De La Salle has won 21 out of their last 22 games. One of the stars of the night, Tristan Nichols. Six catches, 81 yards, two touchdowns. That'll play. Number 25 who's moonlighting as a wide receiver. He's also the point guard on the basketball team that also won a state championship last year. Tristan standing by with Lexi Ayala. <laughs> I'm Lexi Ayala back with Tristan Nichols. You had a great game, a couple of touchdowns. How'd you find your way into the end zone? Uh, I mean, it's all because of my teammates, you know. My linemen, they blocked perfectly for Brady to get the ball to me. And then the one touchdown, I have to thank Sharon and Jack. Sharon uh, made a perfect out route to, to screen off my man. And then Jack got the corner that was coming for me, and he blocked him. So I have to thank them for that touchdown. And tell me about your QB, Drogosh. He got the job done tonight, 49 on the board. What, what did he do to help with that? I mean, Brady, I mean, that's a dog. I mean, what he did to help with that, I mean, he motivates us every day to practice hard. I mean, we go hard, hard, hard every, every week. And, I mean, he's a leader, so that's why. That's so why he's going to Cincy. And Tristan, Coach talked to us a lot about you guys using the L word. You love each other. Yeah. Talk to me about the brotherhood. 
Yeah, we have a strong brotherhood. I mean, most of us have been here since day one, since our freshman years, and we've been building that connection, you know. We try to hang out once a week, you know, on the weekends when we don't have school and none of that. And, I mean, that just helps it. And this was a big win for you guys. 49-16, what's the message now to the rest of the conference, everyone else you face the rest of the season? I mean, the message is, I mean, we're coming. I mean, people underestimate us because we lost most of our players last year. But, I mean, we're getting better every, every single week. So, I mean, I don't think anybody can stop us. Trust in the process. All right, thanks so much. Great game. Guys, back to you. Well, Lexi was just joined by another. Why don't we just throw it on down to him? we got to talk to one more guy, Mason Moragan, who was an absolute animal in the backfield all night long. Twelve and a half sacks last year. He's already on his way to that this year. A couple of big hits tonight. Down we go to Lexi again. Hi, I'm Lexi Ayala, back again with Mason Moragan. Mason, your coach coined you as one of the best D-lines in the entire state. What work have you put in to get to this point? Yeah, I wouldn't say myself. I'd say uh, us as a unit. I think um, our coaching staff has really uh, had a great game plan throughout the whole season. We've been working hard the, uh, the entire offseason. So obviously it showed today the disruption we had from uh, all four of us and all five, honestly, with the rotation. So it's great to win against a very talented, well-coached team, and uh, I'm looking forward to keeping this momentum rolling forward. Mason, held, you guys held Muskegon to just 16 points. What's the strongest part about your D-line? I think our unity. I'd say our unity and our communication. We all believe in each other because uh, for them, for that team to score 16 points, obviously, it's, uh, it's a great feat. So I think our unity, we all come together. If one of us has a bad play, we rally around that, make sure that the energy stays up, no one gets uh, down on themselves. And uh, I think that kept the momentum rolling and um, that just didn't allow them to score any more than 16. Awesome, Mason. Well, I appreciate it. You had a great game. Thank Thanks you. so much. Thank Guys, back to you. Lexi, thank you very much. Three interviews in seven minutes. Lexi working overtime as we wrap up our coverage tonight. Eight on name Gridiron. drops, too. I mean, <laughs> sorry to interrupt you. No, it's fine. I appreciate it. Stick, before we sign off, any final thoughts? Uh, great game tonight. Uh, really excited. The last two games for the prep have been amazing. Last week, Cass and uh, Southfield A&T, both parts, Thursday and yeah. Saturday. And then, of course, this Friday night. This this felt like Friday night football, right? The, you can feel the fall creeping in. Nice, yeah. cool breeze coming in up here. Beautiful backdrop with Southfield with the big buildings in the back. But, yeah, Muskegon coming from the west side of the state. Long way to travel. Long bus ride home. I'm sure they have a lot to talk about, but there's big things happening for that program and De La Salle. Cannot say enough, major things happening for that program. Always a treat to cover football games like this. That does it for our coverage on a Friday night from Wayne State. Wayne State. Lawrence <laughs> Tech. <laughs> Close enough. Close enough. It's like 20 minutes down the road. Warren De La Salle. They may be playing down the road from Wayne State at Ford Field again on Thanksgiving weekend. Way to won. save it. There you go. <laughs> there That's why they passed the hypothetical big bucks. <laughs> 21 out of the last 22 for De La Salle. They beat Muskegon 49-16 to tonight. For Stick, Lexi, and our entire great crew with a prep, Evan Stockton saying good night. De La Salle, 2-0, another win for maybe the best team in the state. <laughs>